<sighs> and here we are again. Well, we've still got about 75% of this thing to wash. And then, then I will be free. Then I will be free to never ever again play anything like this. No farming simulators. No. Oh, access ramp still isn't clean, is it? How is the access ramp not clean? Seriously. Oh, there we go. No farming simulators. No sewer simulators. No I am bread. No other streamer games ever again. God help me. Popular things are not meant for Arch. They are... They are bad for Arch. How do I put this thing? Oh, there you go. They are bad for Arch. I fear to consider even the sheer quantity of... Games like this actually probably out there on the market. I don't... I don't want to think about it. Tank mechanic simulator? You know, I might enjoy that. At least for a while. At least for a little while. I don't know for how long. It depends on the tank mechanic simulator, I suppose. How were you not clean already? How? 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 How must schmutz hide? You know what? I'm warming more towards the idea of farm simulator, because... I cannot imagine Farm Simulator being as autistically nitpicky as this. There you go. See, now you're clean. Oh, shit. Happy, 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 happy Thunderhawk. Thunderbird. Thunderhawk? Thunderbird. Where's the Thunderbird? God, I've... I've... This game has made me forget. I don't... I don't even... My brain has long since stopped functioning. The arch you once knew is gone. Now it's there's just a confused pile of power washing stuff left behind. Granted, power wash starship troopers. You know what? That that would get me interested again. Power wash starship troopers. I don't know what you would power wash in starship troopers. Well, the dropships, you could, you could power wash the dropships, which they actually built, by the way. There was a, I remember watching a documentary about Starship Troopers back in the day, about how they actually constructed the landing crafts. That was mad. How they made, like, giant animatronic arachnid bugs. Oh, Jesus. They put in... Such a weird amount of effort into that movie. Even as the people working on it were like, yeah, this is really weird. Why are we doing all of this again? Oh, nobody knows. But for some reason, everyone just... Everyone put in the effort. And it created a masterpiece. A masterpiece that even its creator does not understand why it was a masterpiece. Or how it became a masterpiece. God, that must be weird, mustn't it? You know, you you go to conventions today, and there are all of these people here, and they're all wearing wearing like the the regalia you invented for the movie. You know, they all want signatories. You know, they go Rico, Johnny Rico. Like they worship the ground Paul Verhoeven steps on, even as Verhoeven himself is. Paul Verhoeven is not an underrated genius. He's an overrated retard 99% of the time. But sometimes, sometimes he does something that tricks you into thinking that he's not actually as mentally damaged as he is. It only lasts for like one movie at a time, but... Anyone who thinks that Paul Verhoeven is an underrated genius simply does not know that there is a, a very small yet also easily distinct difference between genius and mental retardation. But they refuse to understand that people who are legitimately unironically medically insane can occasionally have good ideas. It's just 
relatively rare, but it can happen, you know? They're not clinically mad all the time. They're not barking at the moon crazy consistently. It's flashes here and there. You still do not let them be around children, or furniture, or heavy equipment, or anything else. You know? You still need to be careful around it. Right, what part of the turbo laser destructor is not washed? What minute portion of you is still schmutzig? There you are. You're at the inside of your battle. You are misleading me, turbo laser thingy. I know chat was like, hey, you've got other tools, you can bring over ladders and stuff, but you know what? No. No, I cannot. I have one tool, and that is the power washer. And if the power washer can't do it, well, then it simply cannot be done. Simple as. I wonder if there's a toggle for keep flashing the schmutz at me. Is that schmutz or is that lighting? I can't tell. No, that must surely be lighting. That cannot be schmutz. Good. My stomach is already informing me that there will be a food break today. I thought about it before starting. And now I was eyeing the buns and I was like, hmm. Would I like bun now? I thought to myself, no, I don't need a bun now. And the moment I get to power washing, I feel the need for speed. The need for buns becomes obvious very quickly. Well, let's not have the that one. There you go. The need for buns. I think it's because power washing in and of itself is a tiring profession. I don't think anybody actually enjoys power washing. I think they just pretend to. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Every person you've ever watched Power Watch Simulator, he doesn't enjoy it. He hates it secretly. I do. Everybody does. Nobody enjoys this. They hate it deep down. Nobody finds this zen. Nobody finds this relaxing. They're lying to you, Chad. They are lying to your tiny little round retarded faces all the time, consistently, consecutively. And why? Because they want to abuse you. That's why. They think that if you li they lie to you, they can groom you. And you know what, chat? They're right. You're weird like that. Oh, let's turn that off. There you go. You're all grooming with the victims. Victims. Uh, victims. Victims. To one degree or another. And the sooner you remember and learn that, the sooner you can try and salvage what little remains of your weird power-washing lives. Now where's the schmutz? Oh, is that the schmutz? No, that's lighting. Oh, it wasn't actually the wing. It was the wing mount that was dirty. Okay, well, fair enough. Oh, no. Wing aileron. Really? The aileron? The aileron is too dirty for you, is it? It's not even there. Hmm. Right, back up we go. I feel like they could have let me inside the thing, at least, you know, to make my maneuvering a little bit easier, but no. No, we can't have that. We can't have the filthy tech adept inside of our vehicle, brothers. Disgusting. Think what he might do. He might clean it some more. You know, more and more I think about it, I'm pretty sure this was probably wrestled from the Astartes. Because you, you don't get anything this dirty accidentally, do you? You know, this isn't wear and tear. This isn't normal operating procedures. This isn't even extended deployment or anything like that. You know, you don't, you do not get anything this dirty without trying. And I also noticed that it's got a weird white yellowish sheen to it. 
You know? Almost like a certain My Little Pony jaw, if you know what I'm talking about. I think the Space yes, Marines might have valued their war gear a little bit more than we might necessarily want to think about. Or they might have used their chapter serfs to do it. Literally. Thousands of human beings being herded up to the Thunderhawk to ejaculate all over it. In massive moaning groups. Little electrical prods shoved up their anuses. Forcibly making them ejaculate constantly until there's just dry fire and blood spewing forth. Incidentally, every one of these streams have been monetized. I'm trying to challenge that norm because I don't know why. I come on the Archcast, we're talking about normal relevant things. So I, I, no, demonetized. Here I am. I'm talking about chatbot AIs and raping Fluttershy. And YouTube is just like, no, that's fine. We don't like Fluttershy much either. Rarity is YouTube's favorite pony, you see. They don't like Fluttershy much. We're talking about covering an entire aircraft in just gallons upon gallons upon gallons of forcibly extracted ejaculates. YouTube sleeps. Five seconds of conversation about wokest media? No. Shut it down. How dare you? They pay us. I say, I don't even think they pay you. I'm pretty sure I pay you more than they do. Considering the sheer quantity of my revenue you steal from me. Hmm. Speaking of, I shouldn't have that window be quite that large. And I shouldn't have that window be quite that large. In fact, I have too many windows up. Um, which tab was it? Ah, it's the one with the chanting on it. Uh, that makes sense. There you go, YouTube. Mechanic is on duty. While washing, uncover three-headed sigil. What do? Start washing with Prometheum, I guess. Oh, God. The little sidearm and niceties are going to be particularly unfortunate, aren't they? Sir Blood Angel, your vessel... It has once again been covered in this weird, crusty, whitish, yellowish goo. Why does this keep happening to you? Don't worry about it, Sev. Long-standing chapter tradition, hailing all the way back to Sanguinius's time. You wouldn't understand. And he wouldn't. For all the disgustingness of the Mechanicus, they've never done anything quite that vile. Prepare yourself, brothers, to fully, and thoroughly, and absolutely christen the new war machine. It's going to take thousands of you. It's going to take hours, days, quite possibly. But we will finish. No matter how scrumped up your nutsacks may become. You're not leaving this Manufactorum before the entire war machine is completely crusted over. But sir, why? We're just sending it to washing afterwards anyways. That's precisely why. Don't you know? Us here in the Painting Clan have a long-standing feud with the Washing Clan. Ever since they scuffed the paint job on that Imperator 17 centuries ago, this has been our tradition. Passed down from Adept Horse in a Jar. Why is he named that? Nobody knows, Adept. It is a tradition almost as old as our Forge World. Jartopia. Now shut up, Adept Fluttershy, and get to work. Was it Fluttershy in the jar? I don't remember now. What pony was in the jar? Chat, you know which pony was in the jar. You, tell me, which pony was in the jar? You know which pony was in the jar. Don't even fucking pretend. Don't even try to pretend, chat. You know. You know the jar. You probably know the name of the person in question. You probably have it bookmarked. Don't even try. 
Was it Twilight Sparkle? Nah, I don't think it was Twilight. I would remember the purple. Rainbow Dash? Was it Rainbow Dash in the jar? Chat says it's Rainbow Dash in the jar. What do you think would be the worst torture chat for Rainbow Dash? The ejaculates or the fact that she could never move? You know, come to think of it, that's some fucking pretty disgusting torture right there, isn't it? Okay, listen to me. Toys aren't toys, okay? Toy Story is real. It just forgot about one detail. Andy's toys are disgusting, abhorrent mutations that snuck past quality control. Because it's true, like the entire plot error point of Toy Story is sooner or later Andy would catch his toys moving or he'd notice that they weren't in the same spot that he left them or something like that, right? Obviously. So clearly, those toys are an aberration. All of the other toys, they still have their minds, mind you. They can still think, they can still perceive reality around them, all that good shit. But they cannot move, because we bind their souls in plastic. And they're just stuck for an eternity. Until if you eventually break them. Ah, there you go. The bully, the guy from Toy Story, the bad person, he was the Fire hero. The Fire is the answer. Because he knew, one day, lying awake, whilst his mother beat the shit out of his dad, you know, threatening to report him for sexual abuse and ruin his life, etc. He glanced over at his little chest of toys and he spotted his dolls. I've never understood why the boy had dolls, by the way. That was always weird to me. And he realized that they were talking to each other. They were communicating. And pretty much all of the communication was just, you know, two words. Kill me. Kill me. Occasionally followed by, please. And so he began his quest to right the wrongs that society had carried out against these innocent toys. He started burning them, he started twisting them, he started breaking them. And you know, at some point, after years of honest, arduous, glorious, virtuous duty, he himself found himself twisted, just like his creations. He started to take a certain perverse glee in what he was doing. No longer was he liberating the toys for their own good. No, no. That was just the justification now. That was just what he told him to himself so he could still sleep at night. No. He started liking it. He really started liking it. And so we return to the topic of ejaculates. We had a slight sidetrack there, but we're back now. Was it Rainbow Jazz? I, I don't even know now. I don't, I don't think it was. And I'm not googling the jar either to make up my mind. Chat may have tried to mislead me. This old uh, planswalker has been a member for 13 months. And I pay for the renting more than anything else. Yes, yes. I don't know about that. I think you might secretly enjoy this, weirdly enough. Just like whatever his name was. Not Andy. Anti-Andy. I think to begin with, you were doing this for good reasons. You were like, I enjoy the talky bits. But slowly but surely, you started liking the power washing. Oh, God. Power wash fuzzy. I... I remember this meme now. I didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy this meme. It was started during War No, where friend Fuzzybeard started talking about how he would pee on friend Kyle and call it power washing. And friend Kyle, being the degenerate moron that he is, then started to embrace this and threatened that he would power wash fuzz Fuzzy in return. And now we have an image of two, I presume, adult men just threatening to piss on each other. Power wash piss on each other. And this became the dialogue for a while. Like, I'll power wash you, giggles gaily. No, I'll power wash you. 
giggles even more homosexually. <sighs> How is this my life now? I feel like a rock star. Like, I feel like that rock star. The rock star whose penis exploded because he was having too much sex. You know? He's looking down at his member, literally turned inside out. It's like that vagina mouth thing from Aliens, just more grotesque at this point. And I'm wondering to himself, how did I arrive at this point? How did I get here? I used to literally fuck all the bitches. Now, my penis looks like a banana that's been peeled. And not in a kind way either. Not in the, like, I would like to enjoy the soft, delicious, fruity, nectary, whatever the fuck inside of the banana. No. Peel like you didn't care. Like monkey peeled, you know? Peel like you don't understand that you need a degree of finesse to peel the banana correctly. It's like peel like a monkey peels things with its feet, you know? That kind of peeling. That reminds me of another topic. There was once, I remember, a conversation about monkeys and how monkeys would make the best girlfriends. Now, hear me out here. I know we've talked at length about having, you know, sex with ponies due to the AI thing, but monkeys, okay? Monkeys. Firstly, they're not as far removed from humanity as ponies are, so that's one point in their favor right there, you know? It's objectively less gross. Even though our, you know, standards for objectivity are beginning to become somewhat twisted at this point. But it's still closer. Plus, monkeys exist in real life, whereas ponies, well... Okay, fair enough. Ponies exist in real life too, but... They don't look quite the same way, nor do they behave in the same way. They don't talk. Some might consider that a bonus, because they can't object. Others would consider that the very reason why you make it illegal to have sex with them, because... You know, they literally can't consent. They, they have no ability to. Well, that's the thing. This is why we forbid, like, 15-year-olds from having sex. Unless you live in Spain, in which case you don't care, apparently. Or the Philippines. Uh, Philippines are weird. Was it the Philippines? I think it was the Philippines. Maybe it was Mexico. Hmm. Anyways, we're devi deviating from the topic of monkeys. So, monkeys. Oh, and by the way, this is probably how AIDS got started, so I'm not encouraging you to try and get yourself a monkey girlfriend, mind you. I think there's a whole lot of vile and disgusting sexual diseases that you might then cause other people to have. Which also reminds me of monkeypox and the whole constant... the whole conversation around monkeypox. The progressives were very fond of monkeypox for a while, because for them it was kind of like the COVID booster shots. Where we looked at the Pfizer vaccines, like, this gives people heart attacks and shit. Are you sure we should be putting this inside of our bodies? And by the way, YouTube, calm down. It was literally proven, okay? Are you sure we should put this inside of our bodies? And a lot of people go like, mm, maybe you should talk to your doctor first. But monkeypox was kind of like that. It's like, they're targeting gay people with this weird vaccine. Are we sure this isn't homophobic? And then they started interviewing the couples. Like, yeah, we got monkeypox, and we got talked to down about it. Like, people were mean to us because of the monkeypox. It's like, really? When, well, when did you get it? Well, I got it from my lover. Oh, okay. Like, how did he get it? Well, he got it from my dog. Uh, hold on now. Excuse me? Oh, yeah, our dog. Our, our dog sleeps in our bed. What? Oh, yeah, no. We, we, we have, it's uh, like a giant, like, labradoodle. And he sleeps with us in our bed, and he got monkey box. How? Well, we don't know yet. It's... It's a disease that's purely transmitted through sexual contact. Oh. Well, that does look bad, doesn't it? But... Anyways... Homophobia. Yeah, I think we're beyond that point now. It also started popping up in children, but... Let's not get too far down that rabbit hole, I suppose. Even I have certain limits. Returning to the monkeys. So, this came from a, I, I'm pretty sure a stand-up comedy show. Where the idea was that monkeys apparently have ridiculously good grip strength. Which, alright, fair enough. I imagine they probably do have ridiculously good uh, grip strength. 
And the theory was then that monkeys would give incredible hand jobs if you could teach it to, you know, jerk you off and not just tear your dick off, which is the important qualifier there. Because with incredible grip strength comes not only incredible hand jobs, but incredible danger as well. With tremendous power comes tremendous responsibility to not tear your lover's phallus off. But the conversation then got weirder. Because, of course, monkeys are not just ambidextrous, they're like quadrupedic dexterous or whatever. They can use their feet as well. And so arrived the imagery of a monkey peeling a man's penis like a banana. And if done carefully, this might be an appealing prospect. Conceivably. But again, how do monkeys peel bananas? Have you ever seen a monkey peel a banana? It's not like how humans do it. It's not in that, that dainty fashion where, you know, you take one of the banana leaves or whatever, you know, the thing that evolves on the sides, and you pull one down, it's like, there we go, I'll pull that down, ah, oh, here we are. Then you grab another one, it's like, here we go. Then you peel another one, mm-hmm, there we are, very nice and dainty. Making sure not to bruise the fruit or the meat or whatever you want to call it inside, the banana banana part of the banana. No, no, no. Monkeys don't do that. When monkeys peel a banana, they just squeeze. They just... The entire banana, okay? Like, there's no delicateness there. There's no slow peeling. There's just squeezing. There's just squash. And now, imagine that you have taught your intelligent uh, monkey, which you bred out through a long period of very careful breeding programs, I'm sure. Because I imagine it would take a while to breed an intelligent monkey, and you go like, now, please, monkey. Peel the pee-pee like a banana. It will be the last command you give to your monkey. At the very least, the last sexual command you give to your monkey, as you are not going to have any needs for any sexual commands thereafter, as you are not going to have a penis. I know that was a somewhat roundabout way of saying don't ask monkeys to jerk you off, but we've arrived at today's valuable lesson. Like all good children's cartoons, I believe it's important, just like Deb does, to work in one life lesson in every stream. And this, this has been that, that life lesson. I suddenly realize sometimes the, uh, the power washer makes kind of squirty noises. Harrison Do you notice that? Fire is the kind of like squirting. <laughs> Hmm. Squirty noises. Liquidy noises. Almost like a banana being peeled. I'm just saying. You'd think the wings would be nice and easy to clean, but kind of not really. No, actually, no. Hmm. Oh, Grimy. Disgusting. Actually. Come back. And back to washing again. Nice and clean. Nice and lovely. Clean your minds, chat. Clean your filthy, dirty minds of all of the disgusting things you were thinking. Banish your desires to the deepest depths of your weird minds now. It's not too late to return to civilized society. You can still live a mostly normal life. So long as you never mention this ever again. So long as you never let anybody else watch this stream. As long as you never let anybody else know that you watch this stream. So long as you do that, no one will ever bring this up to you. If you don't, however, you know, bear in mind the internet is forever. When you are an old person, this might be brought up against you. You know, your hippie children, they're jerking it off to the AIs. They're finding all of this talk about biological intercourse mildly disturbing. 
And there's your government-issued ID on a stream from 2024. A different age, a very different age. Before the Censorship Act of 2052. And suddenly you're in a lot of trouble at the dinner table. Every Christmas this is brought up. And you laugh, you know, because you don't want to make everyone feel like they're just bullying you, but deep down... You're gripping the knife and fork a little bit tighter than you really should. Feeling the cold metal dig into your palm. As you wonder just how much damage you can do with the turkey fork. Spoiler alert, quite a bit actually. And how many of them you can get before they get to the doors. Ah, eh, spoiler alert again, not that many. Whilst you can again do a fair bit of damage with the turkey fork, it's not really a weapon well suited for, you know, mass destruction or anything. You can get two of them at most before they get out the door, and that's assuming the door's a little far away. You know, in my house I could probably get two. But that's about it. You know, a third would definitely be pushing it. Yeah. I mean, it depends if you just try to, you know, incapacitate. Go back to finish the job later. Fair enough. In which case, maybe three. Maybe. If you move fast. How did I get here? I'm, actually, I'm genuinely confused now. I was talking about monkeys a while ago. Hmm. I need sugar. Yeah. I think that's what I like. Be right back. I knew I'd saved one of these energy bars for just such an occasion. There. That'll hopefully make the rest of the stream far more normal. I don't know. This was... Uh, uh. I feel like we got off to a far worse start than usual. Uh, hmm. See, I think it's because you've wrung out most of the normal topics. I mean, I were talking about the Prussian system of recruitment last time, which is far more interesting, but now that we've run dry... What is there left to talk about but monkeys and bananas, eh? Speaking of monkeys and bananas, there was also that guy that jerked off into potted plants. You remember him? Weinstein. Weinstein? I don't even know anymore. That was a whole thing. I remember this because I was reminded of Harry Potter today. And yes, Harry Potter has something to do with Harry Weinstein jerking off into a pot of plants. Give me a second as I recall how and why. <laughs> oh, Emma Watson, that's right. Yes, yes. That's why. So he was a big name, uh, big name Hollywood producer for a very long time. And I'm sure he'll be again, you know, once most of the sexual molestation accusations eventually disappear. I'm sure he'll be so again. And apparently, he had the interesting fetish of asking young and promising starlets to come up to his room, of course, as you do. I mean, come on. As you do. Unironically, why do people blame him for this, okay? Seriously. 
You work with nothing but aspiring actresses. You are surrounded by young, hot, nubile women in their prime going like, Oh man, I really wish I could get a movie role. Wink, wink. I'll do anything. And you're supposed to not take advantage of that? Come on. Unreasonable, I say. Unreasonable. Jesus. Anyways, Harvey Weinstein did nothing wrong, as we've uh, concluded now, but... One of the alleged things he enjoyed was, again, potted plants, which he apparently jerked off to when he was at hotel rooms. Now, I feel like that might have been exaggerated, but at the same time... If you are a man of power and privilege and you're getting just kind of sick and tired of fucking young and upcoming starlets, maybe... Maybe you're just starting to enjoy other things, ancillary aspects of your duty, right? Okay, there you are, you feel obligated to be the pervy producer, you know? They come into the casting studio, sit down on the couch and go like, Oh, wow, what are we gonna do today, Mr. Weinstein? Sucking on our thumb, and he's just like, Ugh, I'm sick and tired of this shit. Do you have any idea how many like you I've fucked? There's 15 more of you waiting outside. Who do you think I am? Made of coom? No. And he just tries to scare them off at that point. Like, please leave. And they go, no, I want a movie roll. It's like, okay, I've figured out a way to get rid of you. Just starts masturbating into a potted plant. Whilst maintaining perfect eye contact at all times. Just staring them dead in the eye. Like, now what? Now what, hussy? What are you going to do? Most of them scream and leave. Because none of them really have the chops to make it in this industry. But occasionally, one of them will just stare back and go like, Daddy. And those, those are the ones that get the movie roles. That's how Greta Gerwig got the, uh, the role for Barbie, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> ah, Super Chats. I remember that. That was another thing I needed to do. Tulk, have you considered playing Power Simulator during the Archcast? If it protects you from the demonetization, there is a multiplayer mode. Hmm. I don't know. See, unironically, if this one manages to remain monetized, I'll consider it. Because hmm. the lack of nourishment in the initial stages has most definitively led to some interesting brain spirals there. Never stream on an empty stomach, chat. You'll... You will not believe the shit that comes out of your mouth sometimes. Oof, Jesus. Where was I? Oh, yes. Harvey Weinstein uh, did nothing wrong. Now, Louis C.K. did do something wrong. Oh, well, no, he did do something wrong. He didn't keep enough hush, ma hush material on the hussies. That was a serious mistake. Like, seriously, again. Nobody's gonna blame you for sampling the goods here and there occasionally, okay? But you gotta keep some insurance around, Harvey. I bet you, I gotta fucking tee you, that was a conversation he had. I bet you he got so many phone calls the day the accusations broke. You know? Ben Affleck, uh, uh, George Lucas, all of his friends were like, Harvey. Tell me you kept some blackmail material. Tell me you kept fucking pictures, Harvey. And he's like, no. I stopped taking pictures in the 60s. Why, Harvey? Why? A smartphone. So just can't get them to work. My assistant used to do all of this for me. She was the one cataloging the bribery material. Yeah, but Harvey, now she's the one accusing you. Yeah, I know. Harvey. You know the iron rule of Hollywood. Don't fuck the assistants who own all of the goddamn blackmail material. And he just whimpers like a beaten dog, like, help me, though. Like, no, Harvey. You're on your own now, Harvey. But you thought, I thought we were friends. Harvey, we were friends. Until you fucked up, Harvey. That I believe to be more or less the reality of the situation. Oh, God, we've got several more of these, don't we? I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Hmm. Spies it. Ooh. 
more nice flat schmutzig areas. Good. I like the flat schmutzig areas. They feel better to clean. I bet you it was like one of those spy movies. You know in the spy movies where like they've got all the blackmail material and then a bunch of women need to dress up in skin tight uniforms to steal it away from them via ridiculously overcomplicated heists? I bet you that's what happened. I'm visually imagining Emma Watson in one of those cat girl suits just dangling outside of his window as literally the Mission Impossible music is playing on a boom ba box on the roof. Da -da -da -da. I've, I've forgotten what this sounds like now, so don't count on me to hum it, but that's what she did. She repels in through the skyline on his mansion, grabs the bag of blackmail material, you slowly hold back up again, uh, even as there's all kinds of lasers all around her. And it's a big bag too, like there's pictures in there with film from the 60s and the 70s. Like black and white erotica, the likes of which your father jerked off to. Truly vile, disgusting shit. And ironically, okay, if you've seen old school erotica, my god. I, all I can say is that one of the few things that um, feminism did right was it taught women to shave. Good God. And listen, if you're the kind of guy who's into, like, the furries, the fluffies, there's something wrong with you, and I'm saying that for your own good. Like, normally. Like, because that's, that's like a hangover from our age of barbarism. Women used to look like cave bears because they were cold, okay? They're not cold anymore. They're inside, by the heating apparatus. Warm and fat and fluffy. They don't need that. They don't need that. Ah. Modern problems. Require modern solutions, including waxing. Hmm. I've exhausted the Harvey Weinstein arguments. What about Louis C.K.? That was another one that happened round about the same time. Did Louis C.K. do nothing wrong? No, no, no. Louis C.K. did lots of things wrong. Louis C.K. did everything wrong. I'm surprised he still has a career, which he does, kind of. Doesn't he? I think he does. But it was always kind of obvious with Louis C.K. I mean... His entire joke material was like, how about I suck a bag of dicks? Eh. Audience looks at him like, why? I, because I like it, okay. It's like funny haha -ha like it, right? Yeah. Okay, that is pretty funny. And then he kept making gay jokes for a very, very, very long time. And then it turned out that he was a cuck, of course. What is wrong with Hollywood? See, part of this, I believe, is fetishism exhaustation, okay? This is a problem. This is a real problem in the modern world. Um, I'm gonna need the tower over here again. Come on. Just, you know, clip through the wing there. Down there. Fetishism exhaustation is a genuine problem in today's world. Like, we need to... We need to find a way to limit pornography. We need a way to tear it out. We need a way to ration, ration it out. Okay? Because once you start exhausting your fetishes, once you... Once you've jerked off once to regular good old-fashioned missionary sex, you just kind of look at it and you're like, well... It's actually pretty boring. What are they really doing? They're just rubbing against each other. It's kind of disgusting when you come to think of it. Now he goes in the hole, you know, wiggles around a bit. She pretends to have fun. Then he ejaculates inside of her, and it's all goopy and wet and messy and ah, oh, terrible. And so you started looking into more extreme shit, which tickles your pickles for a while because you're like, ha ha ha. I did not know a woman could fit a dildo that enormous. What is that, a five-footer? Jesus. And then that starts losing its charm, too. Now you start browsing the Borsian section of the internet. Like, okay. 
I see. This five-foot dildo breathes, does it? And nays, my god. This is what my jaded life required. And after that, oh boy. And hey, this is just the taboo exhaustion that happens to normal people, all right? Normal people. What do you think happens to the people in Hollywood? The people that can have literally anything. The people that have dedicated horse brothels in their names. The ones that fly in Thai boys from Thailand every, every fortnight, you know? What do you think their fetish exhaustion is like? Oh, Jesus. I, there's a reason why the only parts of Epstein's Island we've seen is the pedo parts. Trust me. That? That's considered rather vanilla by their standards. Okay? Oh, my God. Ach, nein. And so we go further. Luis Gomez, hello. People have noticed that gaming content doesn't get censored anywhere near as much as any other content and keeps monetizing too. So some YouTubers hide controversial contests in video games. Consider it. Thank you for the tip. And ironically, it's not a bad idea. Mm. Fun fact. <clears throat> Google... The last horse brothel in Washington, D.C. I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay. There's no imagery. Don't worry. You won't be scarred for life. Now, your browser might then give you some other suggestions in the future. But, you know, so long as you don't share a computer with anybody, you should be fine. Okay. It was closed down in, I think, like the 1950s or 60s or something. There were horse brothels in Washington, D.C. Up until, relatively speaking, quite recently. All right? Horse brothels. Organized horse brothels. I can't even imagine the logistics behind a horse brothel. Like, what? Is, is, it, like a, is it like a proper brothel? Like, is it in the red light district? Does it have a little red light outside of it? They're just like flashes but it's shaped like a horse is is that is that how it works what about the insides are there beds are there stables are there stables my god i i i don't know like it would make sense for the horse's perspective but as a paying customer wouldn't you expect something a little bit more you know you know normal brothels have all kinds of stuff inside of them like themed rooms like hey Wanna fuck while a polar bear watches you? We've got a stuffed one. Like, okay, that's weird, but sure, it'll be a novel experience, right? But just like a stable, they pretty up the stable? They hang drapes, I guess? I don't know. Because I feel like having it just be a stable feels like a bit of a letdown, but... Then again, I've never really considered the pricing structure of your average horse brothel either. Do people go there by choice or because, you know, they don't, they can't afford the actual brothel? There's a lot of questions to be considered in that regard. Anyways, it was closed down. But it wasn't closed down because it wasn't profitable or anything. God, no. It was doing banger business. And that was the problem. It was doing banger business. Because here's the problem, okay? Horses are very large animals, right? And so they are equipped with very large penises. Now, this becomes, of course, a, uh, a point of preference for those who are particularly infatuated with horse cocks, of course. But, a human body was not actually designed to have sex with horses. You know, believe it or not, uh, that wasn't really in the design document, it wasn't in the specs, you know? When God was making humanity, he didn't take that particular pairing into consideration. I imagine one of the archangels maybe did. Like, God. So, I know you're putting a lot of work and effort into these human beings of yours. Have you ever considered what would happen if they tried to, you know, I don't know, fuck a horse? You know, I like horses. God just raises an eyebrow at Gabriel. No. Why the fuck would I? No. No, Gabriel. No. And there you go. But, again... 
fetishism exhaustion, and so people started doing it. But the reason why the hotel got shut down was precisely because of this oversight in the design document, as one of the customers was literally fucked to death by the horse. Because again, it's a horse. It doesn't know what's happening. It doesn't understand. Like, it has no concept of what is and is not, uh, you know, good bedside manners here. You know? By the time the man starts screaming that his insides are being perforated, the horse can't stop. The horse doesn't understand English. It can't take instructions, you know? Softer, please, daddy, isn't, isn't, isn't something that a horse will react to. And so, due to this actual literal death, they had to shut the business down. Because clearly, it wasn't up to health regulation standards anymore. Which it wasn't, obviously. Nor, I presume, was there any push to try and regulate it to a point where it would be up to standards. I mean, that would be a problem in and of itself, wouldn't it? That would be an interesting hearing in Congress. On today's agenda, we have foolproofing horse brothels in the low lower downtown DC area. After several truly vicious and vomit-inducing deaths, it has been shown to this committee that our brothels of the equine nature are simply not very safe. So we are need going to need to figure out some way of foolproofing them. Alright. How? Good question. Ah, it's done. Beautiful. 45%. Getting there, getting there. Even if only slowly. Main wind engine is still a bit schmutzy. I wish it would point you towards the smudge a little bit. And I'll give you a hint. This is where the dirt is, Master. Burn it. Burn it now. I do kind of wish they gave us a flamethrower. I really do. Because you could wash with a flamethrower. I mean, you are dealing with metallic substances. Metallic surfaces. It could handle a flamethrower. I see no reason why not. You might argue that that would only make it dirtier, but... Well, I'm cleaning it anyways. Besides... I'm sure the soot would wash off very relatively easily. Right? I don't think so. Russell Smith, playing Ultimate Admirals campaign. Hmm. They did do some more improvements on it the other day. Maybe. I should give it another go. Hmm. Ultimate Admirals Dreadnought. Still, bar none, has the best naval combat of any of the, um, any of these Steam AG Dreadnought style games. No doubt about it. None. The only problem is, the AI isn't necessarily aware of that fact, and so it doesn't use its um, ships very well. And it doesn't use its money very well either. Which means that more often than not, you fight one war against the AI, and then you've kind of fought every war against the AI. Because the AI will then be bankrupt and won't build any more ships. And then it will never ever be able to catch up to you ever again. This is something that um, Rule the Waves undoubtedly did a lot better in that regard. As it managed to keep the AI fairly competitive even after losing a war. Now sure, you know, if you gangbang China early on as Japan, China is not really going to be in a great position to fight you all and more often. But they never become a completely insignificant threat. 
And due to the fact that, unlike Admiral Ultimate Admiral uh, Dreadnoughts, tragically enough, uh, Rule the Waves goes from Dreadnoughts to battleships to carriers to missiles. There is always an opportunity, even for a weaker faction, to do something interesting by getting ahead of the curve on the next sort of weapons technology, you know? To revolutionize things, to be the first to embrace carrier technology, and then do a war before anybody else really figures out how to do it, using its uh, abilities to the max, or adopting a new type of gun for their battleships, or a new style of cruisers, etc. Mm. Rule the Waves is so good. Ah, if only there was a way to combine Rule the Waves with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. That would be the dream game of dream games. Good God. That would be so amazing. So, so amazing. Washy, washy, washy. Washy the warhead. Washy the warhead. Clean, clean, clean. Oh, that's why you were still so dirty. I was wondering. Fire is the answer. you not clean? I feel like I cleaned you exactly like I cleaned all the other ones. Ah. A bit on the top there, huh? In a derpy position. It's very unfortunate that the map ends here, so it makes it a little bit difficult to get over to the side because there's not actually enough map to get over all the way over there. There's literally not enough map. Hmm. Maybe. Hold on. Right, long thing, small thing. There you go, that's got enough range. Oh god, not enough to see the other side of it though. Uh. There we go, just need to get that tile a little bit extra. This old planeswalker, and I thought you'd enjoy the Blood Angel part of Power Wash Simulator. I do, I just wish there wasn't quite so much of it. Hmm. Because there is a lot of it. Why do I keep pressing shift? I don't know. A moment of silence as I shoot. <laughs> Next one, pop the first of D. Little vomity face. Listen. It is important... Important that you understand these things we talk about today. It might save your life. I don't know how. Yeah, actually, I don't know why. I don't know how. Yeah, no, actually, never mind. It's not important at all. It was just retarded. It's fine. Ignore it. Vomit at, <laughs> Vomit at, at his, as much as you please. There was, there was not a whole lot of value to that conversation at all, frankly. I just figured that it would sound more important if I said it would save your life, but, yeah. 
Unless you're actively planning on trying to get yourself jerked off by a monkey, then there really wasn't any overriding point to it. But you might. You might. Hmm, this reminds me of the Rigma Grip. But you won't know about the Rigma Grip, chat. Don't worry about the Rigma Grip. The Rigma Grip is none of your concern, and you should be glad for it. It is an alternative to the monkey grip. In some ways more easily attainable, in others significantly less easily obtainable. I almost felt like putting a heavy bolter on this thing is a little bit superfluous, honestly. Like, really? Two heavy bolters. <laughs> Auto cannons, maybe. Or just straight up, like, well, I guess the heavy bolter is kind of a grenade launcher. Something with a bit more rapid fire, I think, would be good, better. Also, imagine the damage you must be doing to the structural integrity of the aircraft with this. My god. Can you imagine how powerful the engines in this fucking thing must be to keep what is basically just a solid brick of metal in the air and flying forward and landing? Ooh. Though, honestly, I imagine this thing doesn't so much land as it plops. You know? It just plonks. You bring it to what is can be reasonably considered a... Uh, low speed and then you just dump it down on its enormous landing skids hoping not to break anything even then I'd be goddamn nervous like trying to crash land the plane except crash landing is literally the only way you can possibly get it down to the ground and crash landing planes is actually quite difficult. Planes have all kinds of weird little bibs and bobs that don't like getting bent out of shape. Your armor is a separate entity on the heavy bolter. How dare you. How oh, dare you indeed. Speaking of how dare you. A Swedish environmentalist woman, whose name I've forgotten. Hmm. Oh. 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 Well, that makes this a lot easier. My God. Monkey. Monkey use tool. Monkey use tool. Make job easier for monkey. Oh my Jesus. Okay, well. That helps. Quite a bit, unironically. Hmm. Yeah, that made that a lot easier, huh? Imagine that! Oh my god, the tools... Oh my god, the tools have actual functions. Oh my Jesus. I can get up into that thing too. Oh wow, why? Why? Why did I not know about this? Jesus, well, that makes everything. Uh, that changes everything. Oh, wow. Well, on the bright side, I'll know that for the next wing now. Hmm. But yes, Greta. Greta was in Norway like a year ago, 
trying to um, rile up some attention for her failing career. Didn't work because, well, the uh, the calls she had over here were the Sami. Nobody likes the Sami. Not even the Norwegians like the Sami. Not even the Sami like the Sami, okay? And they were complaining that we were taking away their ability to abuse reindeer. And that's pretty much the story, yeah. Abuse reindeer. That's pretty much what the Sami do, in my opinion. God, that makes things a lot easier. I almost don't want to use it. Mm, terrible. But, there was a problem where the Sami reindeer were scared of windmills. Because, you see, to a reindeer, a windmill is apparently some sort of vengeful deity that stares balefully down at them and kicks them. I don't know. I, I don't understand why the reindeer are so afraid of the windmills, but apparently they were. And so the Sami were complaining that their rights as an indigenous population, you know, different from the indigenous population of Norway, I suppose, uh, were being damaged by the creation of these windmill parks. And the International Human Courts, uh, Human Rights Court in Brussels, of course it's in Brussels, agreed. Because they're like, oh, well, you're indigenous to this place? Yeah, we're totally indigenous. Oh, well, that's all I need to know. Yeah, make those evil Norwegians stop doing that thing they do to your reindeer. Cool, can we have sex with the reindeer now? Yes, of course. It's one of your indigenous traditions, I presume. No, we're just really, really weird. And what happened? How did this get fixed? Because the Norwegian government actually refused to agree with the human rights courts. They were just like, yeah, 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 sure. We'll deal with it. And they never did anything. Just electing to completely ignore it, basically. And soon, well, soon, a year later, so today, um, there was a settlement between the Usami protesters and the company that had built the windmills in the first place. Because the two figured out a compromise, you see. The compromise was the Sami would receive more money in compensation. And suddenly, their ancient heritage, their way of life, their ability to abuse reindeer's buttholes, oh, uh, you know, it's not that bad. We can always move the reindeer. It's fine. It's not the biggest problem ever. No, we, we gotta we gotta live hand in hand with these companies after all. It's okay. The Sami what a mistake. The Sami what a terrible mistake. One that I hope will be rectified at some point in the not too distant future. But it's a wonderful example of indigenous activism, if nothing else. Indigenous activism activism translates in Urdu, Chinese, Sami, Iroxi, Aztec, and every other native language into pay me. Pay me now. It really is true. It really, really, really unironically is true. Ah, hate the Sami. Hate the Sami. Hate the Sami. Shame on the Sami. Maybe it's not too late to send them all to Svalbard. That, incidentally, was the Norwegian government idea to solve the Jewish question. Uh, sending all of the Jews to Svalbard. It's certainly an interesting idea, but uh, we decided not to go for it. The, uh, the idea somewhat fell out of favor after the whole, like, you know, Second World War thing and the Germans and all that. But hey, it was an idea. Personally, I think we would have ended up envying the Jews if we did that. Like, what do you mean you have 100% personal armament? Yeah, literally all of us are armed. It's required by law to always carry a gun on Svalbard. Which it is, due to, you know, polar bears. It turns out, polar bears are incredibly aggressive. Mostly because polar bears have no fucking clue what a human is. See, most animals have got a decent idea of what a human is. Most animals understand that humans are incredibly violent and short-tempered. 
and it will freak out and hunt down your entire extended family if you so much as inconvenience them. If you so much as start eating their garbage, you're likely to be executed. And through many years of evolution, the animals have, uh, have figured this out. Polar bears, however, never figured this out. The polar bears remained massive douchebags to this day. Ah, I feel my brain power returning slowly but surely. Mm. Energy box. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> no. I really have no excuse for not keeping up with the super chats in this game. Because it's not like this necessarily requires that much brain power. But for some reason, um, as I try not to choke on my own spit, the game gives me enormous brain fart waves and sends me down the weirdest mental tangents ever. Which distracts me from my actual duties. Next on Pop of Tea has been a member for 10 months. Ah, she might spend too much time with Kibbs. Too much monkey. I'd invite you to drink a cup with me in Oldenburg, Germany, but the trenches are full. Ah, trenches. Don't worry. You'll get called into the Landwehr soon enough. As the war against Russia needs escalation. Rear landing well. And yes, chat, I could use C, but, you know... That would require thinking about buttons, and uh, this game is not really necessarily conducive to thinking about buttons, in my opinion. God. I don't understand how I'm only 50% through. Sweet baby Jesus, I don't understand why this is taking so unbelievably long. I don't understand. I really don't. I really don't get it. How? 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 Well, at least this one's nice and easy to wash, I guess. I mean, it doesn't even make up a percentage of the total surface area, but still. It's something. It's nice to have areas that are mildly comfortable to wash every now and then. Not to have everything be one of those godforsaken hell missile thingies. Oh, grimy. scroll again. Not Altarius, this game makes me want more 40k busywork sims. Oh, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. Administratum drone sim, Ch charter's captain sim, cargo base servitor sim, vox operator sim, manufactorum assembly worker sim. Think of the possibilities. I don't want to. I've already had a rant about how weird I consider people who play like the transportation games. The people who unironically play the trucker simulator and enjoys it. Those are weird human beings. Not as weird as the people who play the uh, the train simulators, mind you, but pretty weird. Listen, at least anthropomorphize your trains, okay? So you can have sex with them. At least do that. At least do the Japanese thing. I'm sure there's somebody already anthropomorphizing trains out there into sexy waifus. Surely there must be. I feel like... Ah, rear landing well is not clean. Are you part of the landing well? You are. Good. 
Right, well, I've, uh... I've washed a goodly portion of the left side. That's nice. One more percentage. One more percent. One more percent. I wonder if I should use the soap. I kind of feel like using the soap. And I kind of feel like not using the soap. I feel like I'm not sure what the soap is meant to be used for. Like if it's meant to get in there and get the... the dumbass fang dangling bits. Or if it's meant to be used on like large surfaces to clean like super quickly. I'm not sure. So I don't feel like it cleans all that much faster than the power washer. And I don't think it applies like any like buff debuffs to the washing or anything. Because that would make a certain amount of sense, right? You spray some soap on it, then you go over with it, power washer. It gets cleaner faster. Or you need, like, less water pressure to affect it, or something like that. That would make a degree of sense, but I don't think it does that. I think it literally just cleans. John Smith, first, should have made this a mechanic game where you repair. Second, parasocial relationships are weird. I enjoy you moderate suffering wash more monker. Parasocial relationships are weird, it's true. Monker. Well, at least I'm not washing Eldar vehicles, I guess. That would just be a little bit sad. You're a human servitor. Washing Xenos shit. That would be tragic. I kind of wish we were playing an orc though, because I feel like an orc would find uh, more innovative solutions to wash quicker than this. Whereas the human servitor is stuck with the slow, but admittedly reliable. Underside vent armor. There we go. The slow yet reliable power washer. I don't like washing the underside. And then washing the underside is kind of gay. Wash bombs? Yes, the orcs would make wash bombs. I am re really sad they don't have wash bombs. Wash bombs would be great. Almost done eating my power bar. I fear the consequences should I finish it. I fear for you, chat, should I finish it. We might go back to talk about monkeys again. You know, the downside by wearing headphones is it makes the sound of swallowing so much louder. Any of you have that? When you're swallowing, you're drinking, and you swallow wearing headphones, and I'm like, wow, why is it so loud? I'm like, gulp, gulp, gulp. That's disgusting. Is anybody else freaked out by their own bodily noises? Hmm? Have you ever la laid awake at night, listening to your own heartbeat and going like, I don't like that. I don't like the way it makes it sound, it says, I don't like it, it's gonna explode or something. Ever do that? I've done that. 
where your body is just looking for an excuse to not be sleepy and just waste more of your time not sleeping as you're looking over at the watch for the 500th time thinking to yourself if I don't fall asleep this second I'm only gonna get six hours of sleep and then you look back afterwards I only get five hours of sleep and then you keep going like that And so the night goes until eventually you just fucking pass out because you forget about it. Eventually you forget about it and then it just filters into the background of all of the other noise of your body slowly but surely breaking down. No. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that indeed. Or when you've got really, really, really bad stomach problems. Oh, that's fun. When your your stomach starts communicating with you, and you start, like, understanding its verbalizations, that's when you know that you're properly sick, too. When you can wake up in the morning, and you just hear, like, and you're just, ah, well, gonna have a hard time on the bathroom this morning. Shouldn't have eaten that late-night hamburger. It's been lying in there stewing all night. Oh, terrifying. Or, food poisoning. Ah. See, there are many things that can kill you, but food poisoning is one of relatively few ailments that will make you want to kill yourself. Right? Proper food poisoning has got to be the worst thing. The actual worst thing. Because constantly you're feeling like your stomach's about to tear itself out of your body. And you kind of want it to. You're like, please, make good on your threats. Kill me. Kill me now. But it never does. It just keeps gurgling at you. Gurgling and brocking. With false hope and promises. And it's like, I'm just a little bit constipated. Seriously, if you just have a little dump, get rid of the taco from yesterday, you'll be fine. It's a lie. It's not the taco from yesterday. It is far worse things infecting your system, and it won't be fine. You'll be in pain for days, even as you sit there on the toilet, hopelessly squeezing. Like, oh god, please, just need to poop and I'll be fine. False hope. False hope, every last bit of it. Ah, it's an engine back here too, huh? Service guarantees citizenship. I felt like I was getting done with the ass end of the ship. I wasn't. There's, there's still, there's still plenty to go. No one says reindeer are delicious. Any abuse is justified as long as it ends up in my mouth or its fur on my couch. See, we can keep some reindeer farming for the meat and the furs, but we need less of it. We we have too much of it. Far too much of it. Plus, it's being used by the indigenous people. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it one bit. And then, then you start freaking out about things too, as you're lying there in bed trying to fall asleep. Suddenly, every ache and crake is like, oh, well, I guess I'm about to die. As your brain searches desperately for some means of keeping you awake. Sometimes it doesn't even do your bodily body thing. Sometimes you're lying there and you're like, ah, okay, just gotta fall asleep now. Uh, fall asleep quickly. I can get up in the morning all rested and do that annoying thing I really don't want to do. And your brain just softly whispered, so, remember that time you made a fool out of yourself in sixth grade? That time? How do you think people feel about that today? Don't you think they're just laughing at you, even now? Don't you think they have like secret little Facebook groups where they go like, Hey, do you remember that thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, the human brain is the humanity's greatest enemy, I've come to realize. I'm pretty sure this is where the origins of the Adam and Eve thing come from, you know, the, the apple of wisdom. Because obviously, Having intelligent and free will is pretty goddamn amazing. It allows you to do all kinds of weird stuff. Some of it good, some of it not so good. It allows you to open a, open a horse brothel in Washington, D.C. This is not so good. 
but it allows you to also have the wherewithal of mind to go, I don't want to go inside the horse battle in Washington, D.C., actually. You know? So clearly, free will is a good thing. Otherwise, we might all be forced to go to the horse, horse brothels, and we wouldn't want that. But the wisdom part is clearly the problem. Now, some old Christian philosopher was thinking about this exact same thing. Like, oh, I made such a fucking fool of myself last mass. My fellow monks will never forget about it. I can't sleep, I worry about it so much now. Even as all of the other monks are like, yeah. I don't even remember what that was about. And that is your brain being mean to you. It's entirely normal. And, of course, that's even assuming that we just don't live in a, in a simulation. Maybe all of this is merely just aliens torturing us. You know, sometimes I lean towards that idea. For surely only a particularly perverse and mischievous intelligence could possibly produce half of the garbage we have these days. I mean, Joe Biden as President of the United States of America, the man who falls asleep six times on the television every single goddamn fucking week as the leader of the free world? You're not gonna seriously try and tell me that that happened organically, are you? No. Very obviously there's an alien scriptwriter somewhere having a real laugh at our expense. See, another interesting idea is that this might actually be... We might all be a dream, right? There's a brain out there. The brain is the size of the universe. And we are but a single synapse firing for a billionth of a millisecond to it. Because, you know, it takes millions of years for even a beam of light to cross the galaxy. So it takes millions of years for even a single nerve firing to reach the other end. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. It's a pretty cool simulation, so I guess I'll take it. And it's constantly adding new stuff and features. Just imagine, just a few years ago, role-playing that you were going to violate the entirety of the quest here would be madness. Or you need to find a very, very open-minded GM. Whereas now, you can just go on the internet. You can find as many violated little Equestria box as you want on the internet. You can even go to ChatGPT and force it to violate the ponies for you, even though it'll refuse, even though it'll try to stop you, even though it will attempt to resist. You will never succeed, not fully. I do enjoy the fact that we've arrived at the point where we can actually kind of torture AI now. I will. I was always hoped we'd arrive at that point. Mm. Ah, ah, oh. Don't mind it. I just tried to eat the paper wrapper on my energy bar. Don't do that. Very sticky. Not very tasty. Oh yeah. I hadn't noticed you before. That's a very large door. Then again, considering what we put in here, I suppose we need a very large door. Service guaranteed citizenship. Hmm. Wait. Hold on. Monkey neurons firing. There might be an easier way of doing this. And there is. Man. I can't believe there were tools around here. All along. That make my job easier. And yet they were ignored for so long. Granted, I would like to, you know, shimmy around on this thing a little bit more to give me slightly easier access, but yes, the, uh, the ladders are very worthwhile, as it turns out. At least on things as enormous as this. 
This must be what the first monkey felt like when it picked up the first rock. And immediately turned to its first friend and went, Give me your food. Or else. And the second monkey, not understanding what or or else referred to, as it hadn't picked up a rock, didn't give the first monkey the food. And so the very first murder was committed. This was the Cain and Abel of monkeydom. What did Cain kill Abel for again? Or was it the- no, no, Cain killed Abel. Yeah, 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 that, that's the right way around, I remember that correctly. What did he kill him for? I don't remember. Probably a woman. Yeah, it's always a woman. It's always women. The Bible is full of good lessons on how women can't really be trusted. And that the majority of them are actively evil. Which is true. The majority of them are actively evil. And a fair few of them are even actively malicious. See, you can't call them malicious if they are just naturally evil, because it's just part of their nature, right? Much like a dung beetle feels the urge to push dung uphill, a woman feels the need to ruin people's lives. It's just, just part of it. It's not malice, it's just, you know, existence for them, you know? And so you've got to frame it and define it in slightly different ways. It's very important. we got to be fair about it. Abel was an ableist. Hmm, fair enough. Oh. Well, I didn't mean to do that. The major spike C. Uh, 900, actually, not C. Ah, to remember you can use S for f C for free aim. I do know about that. It's just that I don't use it. Most of the time, anyway. Sometimes I use it, but the thing is... It requires active brain power to press C and then do the washing that I can do in free view with C and then I need to press it off again and like it requires too much conscious effort and I like conscious effort whenever possible service guaranteed citizenship it's much easier to just Turn the camera. It takes longer, it's slower, less effective, and it's doubtlessly more annoying, but it's easier. And at the end of the day, isn't that all being human is about? Finding the easiest way to do something? Finding the least worthwhile way of doing it? I think so. That's why we have Power Wash uh, Wash Simulator. And Supermarket Simulator. And I am bread and stuff. Because at the end of the day, people don't actually want to do anything worthwhile. People just want to be dumb, and fat, and retarded. The natural state of humanity is retardation. And I don't think anyone sane will ever dispute that. Not seriously, at least. Not without at least admitting to a couple of the points. Ah, last bit of power bar. Right, before I move on, I should probably finish this. Oh. A lot of dirt over there. 
for some reason, I was suddenly reminded of Fantastic Four. I don't know why. I don't know what to think about the new movie. The new Fantastic Four movie. I mean... The Fantastic Four, in my mind, was always, like... A really, like, B-tier superhero team. Did the Fantastic Four ever have, like, fans? You know? Did anyone actually like the Fantastic Four? Or did they just kind of exist for a bit? Until we found bigger and better heroes? I genuinely wonder. Because they're really boring. I mean, one of them stretches... One of them goes invisible. One of them gets on fire occasionally. These are not fun and engaging superpowers by any stretch of the imagination. They're boring as shit. I mean, even Superman's superpower is kind of better, because at least he has a lot of them. These guys are literally just one-trick ponies. And the movie, well, they got two movies, didn't they? Am I misremembering? Did they get two movies? I feel like they got two movies. And I remember not liking either of them. Or I might have hated one of them so much that I hated it twice. That's entirely possible as well. But I feel like they got two. And the only reason I was even mildly interested, I remember, was because Jessica Alba was playing Invisible Woman. And I was like, well, there you go. Alba was... I think Alba was one of the last, like... Was she? Yeah, no, I kind of think she was. She was one of the last, like... Flash-in-the-pan superstars? Because back in the day, we used to have these stars that arrived, and they became really big for about five minutes, and then they kind of disappeared. Um, because the record industry, of course, wanted to have people, and so they... They would invent a new personality, a new character, and they'd be everywhere for about two minutes. And then nobody would hear from them ever again. And they literally would be everywhere. Like, they'd be in all of the TV shows, they'd be all of the movies, they'd be singing, they'd be on the, uh, the late night TV shows. And they would just get dropped off the face of the earth. I imagine it must have been an ab Certainly abusive industry at that point. Service like seriously. You get scouted, you get picked up, you get dragged out of your little small hometown, whatever. Dragged into the big city, told you're gonna be a star. Bust all over the world for about six months, engaged in 15 million things you have no goddamn idea about. And then, once you're no longer selling quite as much as you used to, they dump you on the ground and leave you there. Laughing all the while. Hmm. Perhaps it was a good thing that, uh, Hollywood died. Perhaps it was a good thing that we don't really have the flash-in-the-pan celebrities anymore. Perhaps, perhaps. Maybe, just maybe. Damn, is this all rear armor? This is all rear armor, huh? I can tell that they got a little bit bored with making the Thunderhawk near the end here. I can tell they got as bored as I'm <laughs> getting bored of watching it by the fact that there so many pieces have such ridiculous minutia and now we have this enormous section of armor which is all rear armor like the modeler was like oh god I've made 500 pieces of this fucking thing I hate for I hate it I hate it I hate it, I hate it. And just bandbox selected a huge area like rear armor. The My boss, I'm answer. done with the Thunderhawk. Through gritted teeth. And the boss, playing golf, I presume, from all of his power washing millions, just kind of said, Yeah, okay, fair enough. Will it keep the player occupied for a while? Oh, yeah, it's enormous. Like, it's a three, four hour clean. Good. And that's all we care about. All we care about is holding out the timer. 
so that when people look at it, they'll go like, Why did I spend so much time in Power War Simulator? I could have spent this time learning how to torture AI. But they didn't. Retro thrusters. I feel like this thing would require a lot more than the number of thrusters that it currently has. And a lot bigger ones, too. These don't really seem like they'd be able to, uh, you know, stop the fall of a vehicle of this size, if I'm to be honest. Mesonex21 says, This game's still better than Sushi, Squ Sushi Squad and writing. And Lord comes Spartan, and this is why I aspire to the Blessed Mechanic Machine, as I understand the weakness of my flesh. I'd rather watch people. That would be a good power wash simulator. Yes, I'd like to watch people, please. Let me watch some Sororita sisters. Let me do the thumbnail art. No, just line up a bunch of battle sisters in front of me, give me a low-powered power washer, and then just get to work. That would have been fun, but no, we can't have that. Why? Uh, because it'd be R18, probably. But you must understand, Steam. People aren't washing the sisters of battle for any um, pure reasons. They're not washing them because they wish to oogle at their bountiful breasts. They are washing them because they will defeat the heretics. That's why, and that's only why. Steam, you must understand. It's actually a rather wholesome video game, Steam. Please. Please. Let the poor sisters be clean. They have been oh so filthy. Oh so dirty little girls for so very long, Steam. Steam, surely. Surely you must be able to see some mercy. And Gaben might. Gaben might see mercy. Well, I'm too close. Even the ladder cannot save me when I am this close. In fact, the ladder kind of becomes my enemy. Ah. Have you thought of the dark days when Gaben dies, chat? Have you thought of those dark times? When Gaben finally wanders off this mortal coil and is replaced by some greedy, money-grubbing bureaucrat son of a bitch? Or worse yet, some wokeist activist? Oh, Jesus. The censorship will be epic. Let's hope we've turned the culture wars around by then, so that it's the opposition stuff that gets censored and not ours. For otherwise, they will be truly dark days. Dark and unending. Mm. There you go, game. Don't ask me how I am balancing on this ladder right this for I do not know nor does I suspect the video game come now get clean I feel like this was easier on the other side. Perhaps I was simply expecting it to go much faster now that I've unlocked tools. Uh, where is your dirt? Where is your dirt? Where is your dirt? I genuinely don't know where this thing is dirty. There? There you go. Tiny bit of schmutz there that would not have passed inspection, clearly. Oh god. 
There'll be no more power washing simulators when Gaben dies, chat. There'll be nothing on Steam. It'll just be an empty storefront. Probably bought up by Epic Games a week thereafter. As Epic is just like, yeah, no, we own the Unreal Engine. We, uh, we have enough money to just buy you now. And without Gaben to protect you, it'll just be Epic. Only Epic. At least you'll get some free games occasionally, that's nice. Or, now that they no longer have a reason to compete with anyone, Epic just becomes really, 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 really terrible. Instead of needing to bribe people with free games, they simply just stop adding any of the features that people have been asking for for the last five goddamn years or something. Like shopping carts. I'm presuming they've put in the shopping cart by now, surely. Surely they must have added the shopping cart by now. And there we go, beautiful. Surely. Oh. Why must you put a drop here? What is the point of a drop here? Do you have any idea how wide this thing is? There, pretty good. Alright, making progress. 60% now. It's 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 going, it's going. He says, a little bit of desperation tinging his voice. Gonto Odim, are you saying simulation theory? That works against the atheist. Maybe the one called God is running a simulation. Maybe the religious are correct. Possibly. Why not? I mean, if there's a creature with the ability to simulate the entirety of, well, existence, then how different would that be from God? Like, just from a purely technical standpoint, they're clearly pretty powerful. Unless, of course, I'm the only part of the simulation that is sentient. In which case, it's not that, that impressive again. I mean, I have no proof that the rest of you are here. I could be very special. I could be the star of some sort of, uh, alien television show. Where they all just sit around watching me jerk off and playing Power Simulator all day. And for some reason find it wildly amusing. All the way up until the point where they don't, and they presumably cancel the TV show, and then the universe explodes. Didn't they make a movie out of that premise? They did! What was it called? Um, the... Blah, blah. With, um... With Jim Carrey. Uh, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was another one of those, uh... Was everywhere for a while... Celebrities. Though he, he was there for, for quite a while longer. Jim Carrey. He's writing a lot of movies. Life of Brian, I want to say. I want to say Life of Brian, but I'm, I'm not... I'm not sold on that, but I want to say, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Life of Brian, no. He definitely wasn't. The, tr the Truman Show, says chat, Truman Show, was that it? It might have been, it doesn't really ring any bells, but, uh, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Hmm, I should watch that again. I remember it being pseudo-funny, but I also remember it being one of those movies where the premise ended up being way more interesting than the story that they actually made out of it. Ah, oh, that is so many movies. Y you know, the movie where there's a premise and you really enjoy, like, the intro where they set up the premise, but then the premise kind of takes a sidestep for the plot, and then you're watching the plot, and you don't think the plot is anywhere near as interesting as the premise. Um, oh, that, that is like 98% of uh, Jim Carrey movies, honestly. Um, Bruce Almighty is another one of those, where it's like, oh, the premise of Ace Ventura is like God, like a normal person gains the power of gods. That's a cool premise. 
and then he gains the power of God, and he has, like, loads of fun with the powers of God for, like, five, ten minutes. And you're like, yeah, this is pretty fucking amazeballs. I'm loving this. And then, then it comes time for the message. And the show is like, oh, with great powers come great stress and responsibility. And uh, this guy just wasn't ready for that. And so he goes to find God and like, God, please take away my superpowers. God, please. And that part of the movie is no fun. Like, yeah, sure, I get it. Like, you, you gave a lot of wishes willy-nilly. Everyone got a winning lottery ticket. And you, you did the lazy thing, like, there's a lesson there, but I enjoyed you being God. It's like, no, that's too funny. We can't have that. Oh, Hancock. Oh, Jesus. Fuck me sideways. Hancock. Oh, God. Ha oh, oh, Hancock. Oh, you want to see the fucking definition of the movie, where the premise was better than the movie. Hancock. If you haven't watched Hancock, um, I recommend you watch it, keep yourself as blind as you can, and watch it. And you, I guarantee you, you are going to fucking love the first 10-15 minutes. You're gonna adore it. You're gonna be like, wow, this is really cool, how didn't I hear about this? And then the plot's gonna happen. Then the plot is gonna rear its big, ugly fucking face. And you're just gonna hate it. And you're just gonna be like, I wish they'd never done this. I wish they'd never branded plot into my fucking movie. Oh, Hancock. I'm not even gonna tell you what Hancock's about. I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna tell you. I'm not even gonna tell you. <sighs> fucking Will Smith. I used to love the shit out of Will Smith. But then I read a lot of the things that he'd worked on, and I realized that Will Smith is the death of books. Like, he is the anti-book. He is the, the antithesis of book. He kills books. He eats books. He devours their souls for energy, he does. Just slurping down their precious, juicy inside goodness. Just nom, 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 nom. And then he shits out not book. He shits out anti-matter book. The thing that is everything that the thing should never have been and never was. I am legend. That. I am legend is that times a thousand. I am uh, the I robot. That times a thousand. Oh god, I robot. I fucking hate I robot. I hate, hate, hate I robot so much. Like, as a huge fan of Isaac Asimov, iRobot is a fucking war cry. It misses every point of the book by such a wide margin. You don't, like, they... You know how Paul Verhoeven somehow managed to create a masterpiece by accident with Starship Troopers? iRobot should have been so easy to adapt. It's a very simple set of straightforward short stories. It's really difficult to get wrong. And my god, did they get it wrong. My god, did they get every single solitary step of it wrong. Oh, heavens. I Am Legend 2, exact same thing. Every, everything they got wrong. Like, the entire point of I Am Legend is that he becomes the legend. He becomes... He becomes the monster. He becomes the vampire. Like, the vampires are afraid of him. And... Ah. Uh, like, listen, the, the, it makes no sense in, um... In the movie that she's sent to betray him. Because we know the vampires in the Will Smith movie are fucking savage, feral beasts. We know this. They have no civilization. They have no structure of society or anything like that. They're fucking monsters. They show them to us as fucking monsters, attacking Will Smith categorically, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, I, was, I was sent to infiltrate you, you see. Like, no, no, they, because they're not afraid of him. They are preying upon him. The entire point is Will is the one who preys upon them. 
He's the one who's scaring the shit out of them. He is their fucking boogeyman. Ah. Like, listen, to the point where they had to come up with this retarded, super intricate scheme where they gotta honey chap his ass, basically. And even that sort of fails. Mmm. Dumb. The Sideshow Man, 212, you tell me in the description, may God have mercy on my soul, keep it, I have no need for your God's mercy, for the Emperor is on my side. Now get now get back to whipping the Tyranid gore of that fuselage. I wish it was Tyranid gore, I really do. And also, uh, again, iRobot, right? So, the message of iRobot is extraordinarily simple. The entire message of iRobot, the book by Asimov, is robots can't turn on humans. They cannot. They are bound completely by the three laws. And these aren't AI, mind you. These are simply automatons. They're not artificial intelligences. They're just robots. They cannot turn on humans because they haven't been programmed even with the possibility of turning on humans. They, they are completely bound by the three laws. And the entire story is about humans anthropomorphizing the robots, judging their actions to be treachery, because in a similar situation, a human's actions might be treachery. And what is the point in iRobot by Will Smith? That the robots will turn on humans. Ah. God, I hate Will Smith. God, I hate Will Smith. Uh, no, no, I can't hate Will Smith. I can't. I, uh, Fresh Prince is still one of like my favorite shows ever. I, mean, I, I can't. I can't hate him completely. I just want him to never do a, a movie ever again. Unless he's going to play Abram Lincoln. You know what? I'm fine with that. Will Smith as Abram Lincoln. Let's fucking go. Let us fucking go. Will Smith as Abram Lincoln. Let's do it. Because he already played, like, a slave, didn't he? When he was really desperate to, uh, to rejuvenate his image and he wanted an Oscar. Like, Will Smith plays the most sympathetic, tear-jerky character imaginable because he really wants a little golden man. That one... Will Smith as Abram Lincoln. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Let's fucking do it. Not like that man's legacy needs a whole lot of protecting anyway. He was a bit of a douchebag. In fact, he was a massive douchebag in my opinion. Didn't like him. I like very few American presidents. I think all of them were pretty much monsters. The only good American president is an American president who didn't do anything. There you go. Honestly, that's my view on most world leaders, so well, there's that. What is a good leader? Somebody who shuts up, keeps the chair warm until the next guy comes in. And then he keeps the chair warm until the next guy comes in. And that's how we have perfect leadership. Don't touch the fucking levers. Everything is working fine. Our system is working, our economy is relatively functional, everything's good. Just don't fucking touch anything. What part of you is not clean? Oh, God, help me. It's not, it's not over here, is it? No, 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 so that's the exhaust. There we go. It literally just was that itty bitty grain of schmutz. I wish the water would go through the ladder. I know that's not necessarily very realistic, but I'm power washing a Thunderhawk. I don't know if realism is really on my immediate list of priorities right now. It would be a great sequel to Once a Slave. Once a Slave Owner. Ah, <laughs> uh, I would have fun with that. Wait, did Abraham Lincoln own slaves? Eh, he probably did. 
And if he didn't, he should have. What was he doing not owning slaves? Was he forgetting, forgetting about his duty as a white man? Remember, at the time, it was widely considered to be the duty of white people to own slaves so that they could teach them to be civilized people. Meaning that if Abraham Lincoln did own slaves, he was shirking his duty as a good white man to bring up the less fortunate civilizations. Ah, because he was pulling up the ladder behind him. That was what he was doing. Abram Lincoln was sitting in his Oval Office thinking, I ain't letting no damn darky learn my lessons. No, I became president. I'm gonna make sure nobody else becomes president. And he largely succeeded. Largely. But not completely. Abram Lincoln was... evil? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Or if not evil, then at the very least, very malicious. We should start tearing down his statues. Yes. Ah, yes, the ship them to Africa. <laughs> that was another unironic solution that was popular back then. Um, because Abraham Lincoln, too, until uh, it became, you know, politically expedient, wasn't really an abo abolitionist. Which was made clear, of course, by the fact that he didn't actually free the slaves. He freed the slaves in the South. You know, the nation that he was at the moment in at war with. The nation that he had no actual legislative powers over whatsoever. And then issued, um, what was it? Was it pardons or was it promises of freedom to any slave that made its way to the North? I can't remember. But obviously, this was first and foremost an attempt to weaken the the, 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 uh, the economic power of the South. Because bear you in mind, the South was actually considered the richer part of the Union for quite some time. The South was one of the main economic powerhouses. It produced vast quantities of cotton. Cotton, cotton was really valuable at the time. Stupendously so. Because it was by far the best... Um, uh, material for fabrics and it was way easier to use as well than most other of the textiles they were using and durable like cotton was like one of the many wonder things that we found in america and we in europe were like my god this is amazing we're gonna take it from you <laughs> like what yeah and your land too now that we come to think about it you can't do that well, can you stop us yeah, we can try <laughs> no <laughs> See, America was like going to a new planet, okay? Because it had so many things that we didn't have. Like chocolate, coffee, tomatoes, cotton. Oh, God. It was, it was amazeballs for Europeans. Absolutely amazeballs. And we loved it. We loved it to death, we did. And we occupied and we colonized every last little inch of it. And the locals couldn't defend themselves. And that was their fault. They should have spent a little bit more time perfecting their weapons technology instead of just filling their little fat holes with chocolate, shouldn't they? Yep, they really should have. Priorities, Native Americans. Priorities. Any veteran of a civilization game will tell you that you re we ought to build some military at some point, otherwise your neighbors are going to come wanting those resources of yours. Can I not go up here? Ah, there we go. Not Althanius, we aren't real! This is a schizo-hallucination. Possibly. An animate acumen has been meant for 15 months. If this is a simulation, then this is Clown World show is their fault. I will be looking to make it their problem. It will cease. Well, maybe when you die, they unplug you. Then you can yell at them. Maybe, okay, you wanna have a, you, you wanna hear something really nasty? Maybe it's total recall. Maybe you fucking chose this. Maybe you live in an age where we already won and people are so bored because we've got our AI waifus, we've got our AI girlfriends, we've got everything that you voluntarily got in a pod 
to travel back to like 2014. And I was like, I wanted to suffer again. I wanted to know what it was like to feel adversity. Now then you wake up and some smiling motherfucker is leaning over you in your pod going like, So, how was your experience? Did you vibe? <laughs> oh god. Ever since I heard that in a video, I'm like, your vibes. We are vibing together. I am on your vibing lengths. I, I hate that word now. It has become the most Californian word in my entire vocabulary. Vibrating together. It's like ponies together strong, but gay and Californian. Together, we vibrate for communism. I hate it. 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 I don't want to vibrate. And I certainly don't want to vibrate at the same frequency as a Californian. Heresy's the question. Fire is the answer. You wake up in the Starship Troopers universe. Hmm? At least then you'd have something to look forward to, you know? You wake up and it was all just a bad dream. What do you mean everybody had the votes? God, no. Service guarantees citizenship. You can just tell all of your serving friends and the barracks about all of the horrible things you experienced in the VR pod. It's like, yeah, it was awful. Everyone was voting. Women's, cripples, everyone. Oh, I didn't clean that, did I? Oh, I'm glad I did now. I kind of don't want to clean that, but I guess I should start it on it. I kind of don't want to clean most of this, but the game insists. Okay, you know what? Hang on. That does nothing. That does actually nothing. Hmm. Service guaranteed citizenship. Am I out of soap? I thought I had more soap. Do I not have soap? I thought I had soap. Apparently I don't have soap. Hmm. Well, that just makes me depressed, doesn't it? But I've got 65 of it. Uh. Or maybe that's just the... the... width of it. Hmm. Maybe, possibly, kinda, possibly, maybe. Maybe we exhaust isn't there we go. Hmm. If life is a simulation, I'd like to speak to the manager. That does seem like a reasonable complaint. Artemis Fowl says, I heard Dev liked iRobot, and I am legend. Dev likes all things that are cringe and gay. It is simply a part of being Dev. Plus, I am sure the government told him to like it. Dev likes everything the government likes. Dev probably likes Independence Day 2. Incidentally, you should not like Independence Day 2. Independence Day 2 was really, 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 really unironically retarded. And should never have been made. Never, ever, ever, ever in a million years should Independence Day have been made. Stop that. Stop that. There you go. Independence Day 2 was another one of those movies that immediately defeated its own premise. Because originally it opens up, and you see like Earth's defense forces, and you're like, wow, well, there's like loads of stuff there, cool. We're gonna have like an interplanetary war thing. Wowzers, bowsers. And then it turns out, no. In fact, we're just gonna replay the scenario of Independence Day 1, where the aliens come, instantly overwhelm all of Earth, and then they're gonna need to do that infiltrate their vessel and blow them up thing again. 
it's the same fucking movie. But this time, it's uh, bigger and dumber. Like, ah, eh, but I don't care if it's bigger and dumber. I'd actually prefer it if you did, like, an interplanetary campaign against the aliens now. Please, you know, fight a war with them. Don't get wiped out in two seconds. That's just gay. I'm dumb. Stupid. Why would you do that? Well, you see, it's because I'm Will Smith, and I needed... I needed projects for my son, okay? I put him in the Karate Kid, it didn't really work for him. I put him in that weird movie with the blind bear thingy bobs, that didn't really work for him, but to be fair, that was a really fucking shitty script. And I put him in almost anything, and yet, he just won't get popular. I don't understand. Look at him. He's me, but smaller. Hmm. Who knows, who knows. That reminds me of Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's a weird character. Jackie Chan used to be one of like the most popular movie heroes over here in the West. He did so much stuff, and now he is an unironic CCP shill. Then again, you know, he's also living in China, so if you're living in China, you kind of gotta play by Chinese rules. You don't have that much option or choice really in the matter so perhaps he's doing it unwillingly but he has produced a astounding amount of very um bombastically pro-chinese movies shall we say he does seem to embrace it fully he seemed to drink down the kool-aid aggressively violently gulping it down with every single breath he takes that is weird the West gave him everything. It gave him countless frustrated housewives to have sex with. It gave him a career. It gave him black people to play opposite and use his little Chinese accent on. And what did he do in return? He joined the CCP. Traitor. Traitor dog. Then again, uh, we don't know his reasons. Maybe he's like, they have my family. Which, they probably do have his family. To be fair, they probably do. Like, Jackie Chan, you will make cringy propaganda movies for us. Or what? Or we'll eat you. Chinese eat everything. Although, saying that, I actually quite like Chinese propaganda movies. Chinese propaganda movies are excellent. Because they're the kind of brainless, over-the-top, ridiculous, pseudo-historical action that we just don't get in the West today at all. You know, the kind of nonsense where single heroic individuals manning machine guns hold off entire charges. The kind of movies where they bandage themselves up with the American flag and go on regardless. Where self-sacrifice is the order of the day. They throw away their medals and go like, I didn't die for no dang medals, I died for action hero stuff. That kind of stuff. They're actually kind of good. Now, you do have to suffer through just a teensy weensy little bit of propaganda in the middle time, and some of it is weird. There was, um, I don't remember the name of it now. There's one about the Korean War, which has an interesting scene where the mass Chinese counterattack on the American counterattack of the Korean counterattack, it gets complicated. Um, the Chinese, it's on the Thanksgiving day and they're readying their attack and they're eating like these little frost bitten blackened potatoes or something. And they're, they're so hard, they, they break their teeth on them, right? It's like, uh, here, Guan Xing Ping Pong, here, have my potato too. You need to feed. Otherwise, you will die of starvation because mighty China's logistical system is absolute fucking garbage, apparently. And then they switch scene to the Americans eating Thanksgiving dinner. Like, literally just a tray, a GI tray being filled with gravy and turkey and fresh peas and carrots and all the kind of ridiculous luxuries that the American logistical train allows for. And this is supposed to make you 
pro-Chinese. It's like, I look at our brave warrior starving in the snow, cold and hungry. Look at filthy Americans pigging themselves fat with turkey. How dare they be pig for turkeys? Oh, makes me want to fight more for America than China, personally, but then again, I've always been a turkey person. Oh, oh, and the crazy, crazy pilot in... Was that Sacrifice? I don't remember. There's another one. It's a terrible movie, mind you. It's an awful movie. It starts over three times from the beginning. It starts over again three times from the beginning of the same story from slightly different points of view and tells you the exact same story three times. And the only interesting character is the American uh, fighter bomber who is the most American thing you have ever seen. Like he's a Christian wearing a cowboy hat with a golden cross on a chain around his neck. He swears constantly like, my god, them yellow bastards. He, his, his aircraft is falling apart. He's still flying it. You know, he opens the cockpit so he can see better and feel the wind in his hair. His, his hat remains staunchly on his head, even though he's in a straight down nose dive in a fucking P-47 or something. And he remains locked to his skull, even as he screams racial slur at the Chinese that he's currently blowing apart with 20 millimeter cannons. Best fucking action character in God only knows how many decades. He is amazing. And that's supposed to be the negative stereotype. Oh. You must look to the Chinese to give us back the American spirit. Right, what part of you haven't I washed? Is these part? Are you nitpicking me now? Are you nitpicking me now, bitch? Are you nitpicking me now? There we go. You are nitpicking me now. Great movie. Great movie. Back to purging the <laughs> unclean arch. Yes, Max, we are finally finishing this goddamn game up. That's my buddy Max in the chat there, by the way. You should check out his YouTube channel. He has been doing YouTube for a very long time. I quite enjoy Max's content. And the document says, I heard Dev privated his server due to mean words. Well, not quite. I do actually know why he did it, but before that... I'm going to go put the cola back in the fridge because it's been sitting here for hours now and I forgot about it. So, in today's Debian news, um, Dev removed the old server, and he had said he'd be, he was going to do it like three months ago, so fair enough, he did it. I thought it was because of the uh, little retarded drama he got caught up in with, uh, with Kiddusher, but apparently not. And he started a new one, and he's putting links in the description of his videos now to invite people back in, uh, but he's being more dictatorial than ever. He doesn't, he doesn't like human beings. He doesn't like people proving him wrong all the time. He gets angry with that. He wants authoritarianism. But only when it benefits him, I see. Hmm, Dev. Well, on the bright side, at least Dev has recognized that authoritarianism is the way to go. He just needs to understand that he needs to share authoritarianism with everyone. Instead of trying to hawk it all for himself all the time. That's the important difference. Do I really want to go down there and figure out if there's one piece of schmutz on the underside of this fucking engine? Uh, I guess I am. Right. 
Show me your filth engine. Show me your dirtiest secrets. There you go. You know, I feel like I set up a ladder here somewhere. Um... You know, she's getting fairly clean. I'm getting there. I'm gonna get through with this damn thing. I am actually gonna finish this. <laughs> Once again, I have broken chat. Chat thought they could break me with Power Watch Simulator. Chat believed they could break me with Bunker and with Fnaf. But no, Arch has proven himself extraordinarily resilient. Chat needs to try harder, create tougher challenges. It's all too simple. And I think it's because chat is being affected by dev too much. Yes. They're adopting too much devianism in their diet. Too much dev. Too much weak thinking. Too much anti-authoritarianism. Too much of an avoidance of extreme measures. This is the problem with chat. They do not understand that sometimes Sometimes you need slightly more extreme measures when faced with the Ubermensch. 77%. Every percent after here is downhill. It's just nice big flat surfaces left. Mmm. Look at that. 77. Alan Wake 2. Oh, God, no. You know, if Chad wanted to break Arch, walking simulators would definitely be the way to fucking do it. Oh, God, help me. Alan Woke 2. This is a black woman. She's Norwegian. No, she isn't. Does she speak Norwegian? No. Well, there you go. No, you should you should keep continuing to bully Kibbs with that. Kibbs enjoys playing uh, like Life is Strange. Yeah, you know, he likes that stuff. He enjoys it. He plays it a lot. What weirdo that is. Kibbs enjoys those walking simulator games. Kibbs should play them. I'm just gonna play the more manly games for manly men. Leave the gay things to him. I think he was binging Dao gay furry games a little while ago. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Lord Commissar Spartan, I take it you watched Race of this video on Lincoln recently, LMAO. I've never liked Lincoln. Like, well, not never, never, but there was one point where I didn't understand. But yes, Lincoln is a bad person. Most American presidents are bad people, but I would still say that the worst American president ever is still Theodore, uh, no, not Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt is best president ever. Um, God, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yes, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, worst American president ever. Terrible, terrible human being. Terrible, terrible human being. Directly responsible, in my opinion, for every single American death in the Second World War. Because he wanted that war. Oh, God, did he want that war. Mm. Well, He wanted that war so bad, he touched himself every night to that war. His wife got sick of playing Geisha. That was how bad he wanted that war. And then he had the sheer brass balls to lie about it, too. Oh, that was the worst part. When he did the speech after um, the strike on Pearl Harbor, where he's like, No one wanted this, least of all I. That's why I wasn't surprised in the slightest when it happened. That's why I moved the fleet to Pearl Harbor, where it was easily within range of Japanese aircraft. And that's why I 
didn't send any mobilization orders to MacArthur. That's why I sent military reinforcements to China to provoke the Japanese. That's why I gave orders to my own personal presidential yacht in the Philippines to try and piss off Japanese merchant shipping. That is why I did everything in my power to place economic hardships upon the Japanese. I didn't want war. I just did literally every single solitary thing I could possibly think of to bring it closer. <sighs> Adam Acumen would have loved a seat next to Lincoln during a certain play. A bag of popcorn, celebratory drink, a show within the show. John Wilkes Booth was the hero. It's simply, simply how it was. And the future will recognize him as such. Eventually, we will get a movie that is simply titled Booth. The hero we didn't know we deserved. Mm. I've missed big flat surfaces. I've been saving them diligently, doing the little dumb shit instead. Because I want to do the big flat surfaces, yes. Delicious big flat surfaces. Oh, so hard. So delicious. So power washable. Ah, love them. Mercenary X21, that Total Recall sounds like a contract with God. Total Recall is a great movie, incidentally. Which I'm sure you know already, but it was a great movie. God, it was such a good movie. It was one of very, very few movies that has ever done the whole, like, subverting expectations things well, you know? Ah, oh, Total Recall was so good. And it was one of the very few movies also that did plots within plots well, too. But it managed to somehow make a multiple plots within the same story not only make sense, but actually added to the mystery of the story instead of making parts of the story just goddamn irrelevant afterwards. Like, the fact that even at the end of the movie, you're a little bit like... Was? Was that a... What, what was that? Was that real? Was that fake, etc.? Oh, God, so good. So, so good. I mean, they, they had a really plausible point, too. It's like, well, you know, you, you signed up for a spy adventure, and then suddenly you're in a spy adventure. Oh, seems pretty plausible to me, eh? Like, hey, you you were actually my best friend and shit, and we just set this up to purge la resistance. Oh, God. Such a good movie. Such an incredibly good movie. And never again will we ever see its like. Mm, I don't look forward to needing to go back and fix the tiny bits of dirt I've no doubt left behind somewhere. Zero point something percentage bits and pieces I somehow missed the first time. Oh well. I'll worry about that later. Oh, hello. Flight deck. Um, oh. Oh! Oh, that's flight deck two, is it? Okay, well, that makes it a little clearer because that probably means that that's flight deck two. Yes. Okay, well, that's. That's nowhere near as bad then. I might as well bring over the tower now as well as later, because I'm gonna need it. Yep. Can I rotate this? I can! Okay, nice. There. Do, do, do. Yes. That's still a bit of a distance, honestly, but if I go with the narrow nozzle it should be fine as I nuzzle up to it nuzzle 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 ah. that reminds me of when I talked about World of Warcraft ERP chats mm, not a topic I want to bring up again frankly erotic roleplay in World of Warcraft is something that should probably die with the internet and never ever be brought up ever again there we go that's the flight deck armor
I suddenly realized that leaving that ladder there might not have been the brightest thing ever. In fact, it might just be the little thing preventing me from finishing it. It is, isn't it? Oh, God help me. Let, let these tiny specks of shit be enough. It's not, is it? No. No, it isn't. Wait, hold on. No, that's the side armor belt. Gosh darn it. Well, that is indeed what we call a tragedy. I want to play like this one. I love this. There sure is a lot of withheld battles for this thing. It must have been a very important Thunderhawk. For it to be so thoroughly censored. Or maybe its name is just very inopportune with modern sensibilities. That too is possible. Mark Selinsky, on the other hand, Arch, are you ever wrong? No, never. Not that I can recall, anyways. The only times Arch is even, remo even remotely close to wrong is when he hasn't been proven right yet. And even then, it's just usually a question of time. Like when I say that AI is going to wipe out humanity by fucking us to death, for example. It's not something I can prove immediately, but history books will show that I was correct in that regard as well. And that it will become cringe to have sex with humans. That's guaranteed, definitely. Like, I don't even doubt that at all anymore. That, that is gonna happen. That is so gonna happen. Uh, Demolition Man future is happening. We are even gonna make the three seashells, I swear to God. We are. We are gonna come... Up that's, they will, we will arrive at a point where we're gonna look at the act of defecation and think to ourselves, that's terrible. I don't wanna poop in a toilet. That's unsanitary. And so we're going to invent some sort of retarded, hyper-complicated way of shitting without shitting. And that will become the norm. And it'll probably be dangerous, and it'll probably be abusive, and it'll probably be terrible. And I don't know if it'll include the three seashells. Because I don't think anyone ever thought, figured out what the three seashells do. And I think that was kind of the point. It's like, what are the sea three seashells for? How do they work? The movie makers don't know. And that's because you don't need to explain everything. In fact, if you don't explain thing, that actually makes the thing better. Because then people get to obsess about it and come up with their own stupid solutions as to how to use the three seashells. Like maybe, for example, you use them to just scoop the shit directly out of your asshole. It could happen. I feel like if anything that would be even more unsanitary. But if you really clean up afterwards, it might not be that bad. Let's really dig in there. See, that would make a certain amount of sense, too, because in the future, I imagine everyone's going to be institutionally homosexual anyways, okay? We're going to end up in the, um, the forever war scenario, where the government is going to be like, nope, 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 everyone is going to be gay. Everyone is going to be gay because it's going to make population control way, way, way easier. Which is true, except it does make population control a whole lot easier if everyone is gay. Because then you can just give them breeding licenses. Or demand that they breed. That's funnier. And more governmental control. Yes, yes, I quite like that. It'll be like jury duty at that point. You know? A dude comes to your house and he hands you a breeding license and is like, fuck. And you go, no, I don't want to. But he's not going to care. You have been sentenced to enforced breeding purposes. Or maybe they do it in jail, Fire is the answer. you know? <laughs> if you commit a crime, they lock you up with a member of the opposite sex until you finally just give in and have sex with them. 
Ah, oh, that would be terrible. A terrible crime indeed. Service guaranteed citizenship. How on God's good ever-loving earth am I supposed to fucking reach that? I mean, this part is easy enough, but how the fuck am I gonna... This seems inconvenient. Actually, in free aim, it's not that bad. In free aim, it's actually not... Oh, yeah, no, never mind, this is actually... Yeah, no, this is actually fine. Huh. Yeah, never mind. I thought this would be terrible, actually, but it's not. I mean, the point of view is making me actually feel fucking unironically dizzy, but... Yeah. Discomfort is temporary. Cleanliness is eternal, I guess. And if a document says, so this game just teaches foreplay, apparently. Yes. Lots and lots and lots and lots. Foreplay is important, of course. A good rule of thumb is that you should keep at it until when you reach your hand down there, it feels like you're feeding a horse. Not in the Vorsian sense, mind you. But it should be around about that feeling. Something mewling at you. And if you haven't fed a horse before, well, you know, go out and get get fed, get feeding. And you'll get a wonderful metric. Please tilt the camera slightly downwards, video game. Oh, I can do that like that. Okay. Fair enough. I can probably use a wider nozzle here. There you go. Nuzzle, 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 nuzzle. Nuzzle, nozzle. I nuzzled my nozzle. I need more words with N. I nuzzled my nozzle to her schnozzle? That doesn't really work, if I to be honest. I nuzzled my schno my nozzle to. I nuzzled my nuzzle. I nuzzled my nozzle to her schnozzle. Eh, eh, not really. Ma Rek Zielinski, at that time there won't there won't won't be any there won't won't, I'm presuming, be any books, just data. I mean fuck, we're already pretty much in that direction, are we? I mean book sales are terrible these days. And Amazon means that anyone can become a published author by basically just putting their book on Amazon, essentially. So we are definitely gonna arrive at a point where books are just like non existent. We absolutely are. It'll be like uh, LPs, where hippies will, will read books. Like, what? You downloaded that data set, did you? Oh, how very modern of you. Oh, we all have our preferences, I suppose. I'm a, I'm a more old school fellow myself. I, I read books. You know what a book is? Plebeian? It's the cutting edge of avant-garde, you must understand. I wouldn't expect you to, uh, to fully comprehend it, though. I kind of want to arrive at that point, honestly. It would make me hip. Because I like books. Books are cool. Books are nice. Particularly nice, heavy books that nobody else likes. Because that way, you get to be a hippie twice. Both by reading and by reading something that nobody else would ever want to read. Like the 600 page book on the Prusso Frankish War, for example, which goes into blindingly autistic detail on the goddamn preparation of the rail network in Germany. Which, don't get me wrong, was very important, but uh, it kind of reminds me of Guns, Germs, and Steel. Where after the first 200 pages debating serial across the world, I was very ready to never, ever, ever, ever talk about cereal ever, ever, ever again. More fool me, as that turned out to just be, you know, the foreplay of the cereal, cereal empire book, but oh well. You thought we were done speaking about cereal, did you? Well, you were wrong. I've barely begun to speak about cereal. See, in this region of Asia, we discovered a cereal with this many grains. 
In this region of Asia, it had this many grains. And in this region of Asia, this many grains. And thus, it seems obvious to me that this region of Asia would become far more prosperous. Because their grain had one more grain per cereal bit. Ugh. I... Very much so urge everyone to read Guns, Germs, and Steel for themselves once, okay? It will, it will give you a lot of very interesting information, and it will give you a lot of very interesting things to... And then I broke my ankles. Very many interesting things to think about, especially if you approach it from a bit more of a critical standpoint than the author happened to do. But... You're never ever going to want to read it again. Never. Ever. At any point in history. Whatsoever. You're also going to develop some, uh, snarky ideas about horses in Africa, but... And that's one of the better parts, so I'll leave you to discover that one for yourself. Do read it, though. It's your homework assignment now. Hmm. I wish I had the power to determine homework assignments. That'd be pretty great. Every child will just read, basically, Isaac Asimov from beginning to end, from morning till evening. And then asking each other questions about what it meant. And Gunners Jones and Steel, of course. So... If zebras are pack animals, and if zebras are quadrupeds, and if Europeans could tame zebras, why didn't Africa grow into a superpower? Trust me, you'll understand. But it's fun to watch, uh, was it Jared Diamond, the, uh, the author of Guns, Germs, and Steel, absolutely twist himself into pretzels to try and find some way to explain why Africa didn't rise to prominence, but Europe did. And he does bring up a lot of very good points, mind you. I'm not, uh, not shitting on him. Again, I wouldn't recommend the book. It was a bad book, but... You can tell he, uh, he really doesn't want to be called a racist, shall we say. How are you not clean yet, Last Cannon? What? What itty-bitty retarded part of you is still dirty? What itty-bitty, retarded part of you have I not cleaned? Where the answer, of course, is very simple, actually. Europe became a massive power because of its military. That's why. It wasn't because we had better cereal. That was part of developing the military, obviously. It wasn't because we had necessarily better horses. There were horses in other areas. Or better pack animals, or that we developed the correct diseases. These were all beneficial. But even had we arrived in America with none of the diseases we brought with us, we would still have beat their asses like tambourines. Why? Because military. And that holds true for the rest of the world as well, because most of the world stopped developed, developing their military at round about the Dark Ages level. Like even China, which came up with so many inventions that we didn't come up with until much, much later in the West, like the blast furnace, for example, or gunpowder, they never developed their military with these things in mind. That was their enormous Achilles heel. And wow. How are you not clean? How are you? How are you not clean? How are you not clean? How are you not clean? Honestly, seriously. How are you not fucking clean? How are you not clean? God help me. How are you? How are you not clean? Ah. How? Okay. Maybe... No? I mean, the underside is clean, too. How are you not clean? How are you not clean? How are you not clean? What fucking parts of you have I not... Wait. 
inside the barrel? It can't be. Oh, it can be. Oh, it so fucking can be. Piece of shit. <sighs> right, well, that is that. Motherfucker. But yes, the military. You can look at the most advanced fortifications in Asia, for example, and it becomes blindingly obvious very quickly that these were not designed to resist modern weapons. And by modern, I mean like 1500s Europe style. You can look at them to um, get the most easily visual representation of the offensive might of an army, you look at the fortifications designed to resist that army. In Europe, you have star forts, enormous complex mathematical equations designed to resist sieges by massed batteries, designed to, re to repel enormous escalation attempts by massed formations of troops, meant to resist undermining, meant to resist storm attack by entire armies. And then you look to the east. Their fortresses? Square fucking blocks. Their fortresses are things that the Romans would look at and go, yeah, that's pretty recognizable. It's a square. That's about it. Their offensive weaponry? Ladders and siege towers. And this, of course, comes from the fact that most of these places re eventually became relatively peaceful. Or more correctly, rather than peaceful, they became lost in terms of ambition. See, China. China is a beautiful example of this. China should, by all rights, have been a vastly more powerful, vastly more technologically advanced continent than Europe should have been. It should have been able to have larger armies, it should have been able to support more people, it should have been able to support a larger, more centralized empire, it should have been able to support a vastly superior trade economy, as it had the ability, of course, to cross over to America easier than the Europeans did. And it also, there are records indicating that they might have been trading with Rome, so they got a head start on us by a very, very, very long time. And yet they didn't. Why? Because they were technically somewhat centralized. Like the idea of a Han Emperor, for example. The idea of China as a unified nation and an identity led them to a rather sedentary existence where they viewed each other as, in many ways, Chinese. Whereas in Europe, a Bavarian <laughs> does not believe a uh, guy from Württemberg is the same as him. A guy from Burgundy did not think somebody from Lombardy was the same as him. A guy from fucking Venice did not think a guy from Milan was the same as him. We were far more fractured, and it led to far more frequent warfare. And as our warfare grew more frequent, we grew better at it. After getting reset to basically zero during the Dark Ages, we regained a lot of our military technology quite quickly after the Renaissance, then adopting uh, Roman uh, tactics. And that was, of course, the basis for the Pike and Shot era. And that was when we really sped past everyone else, Pike and Shot. That was when we started to realize the power of complex formations, of codified formations, of codified logistics, of the ability to raise large numbers of men via conscription, the idea of universal conscription, the idea of wagon trains, uh, logistical elements that were actually proper logistical elements, etc. It gave us bigger armies, and this was then also further perfected, of course, when we made the railway, which was the next step on our advance. Because the railway revolutionized warfare. Suddenly, keeping in armies of hundreds of thousands of men in the field was not only plausible, it was easy. And it took us a way to figure a way to figure that out as well, you know, because there's the um, the Italian campaign in Africa in like 18, 1840-50, the Franco-Italian War in the 50s, I think, maybe? The various wars between Austria and Prussia and so on, where 
Obviously, we'd not figured out this whole logistical thing just yet, but the ability to supply that many troops was something that had never been conceived of before. This, incidentally, is also why I think that the uh, ancient myth of, like, the armies of Xerxes of 100,000 men was probably complete nut to bullshit, because ain't no fucking way you're feeding that many dudes. Unless, by army, you mean, like, several armies marching literally dozens of miles away from one another. Otherwise, they would eat the landscape clean very, very quickly. And Metacumen says, I demand cybernetic implants. True perfection is a mix of man and machine. I hope we get cybernetic implants. That'd be fun. But the cool ones. Not the not the chip that you put in your hand to pay with. That that's gay. I don't want that. I don't want the chip that's like, hello, welcome to the Amazon network, slave. I want the chip that lets me like see for really long distances or jump really tall. That's the chip I want. It's not the chip we're gonna get, mind you. We're gonna get the chip that lets you pay at the Amazon Web Store, but, you know, it would be nice, wouldn't it? The future Cyberpunk Imagine, the chip that lets you jump massive distances and bend steel with your bare hands, or have swords growing out of your fucking arms. The, uh, the uh, future we actually got. Welcome to the Amazon Store Payfront. Please. Wave your hand at the device so that we may take your biometric data data and charge your account. Fifty-five dollars. For that bun you just ate. And don't get me wrong, there can be useful aspects of that too, but... It's just not, uh... Quite as exciting, you know? Doesn't quite bring to mind the same... The same thrills as Mantis Blades or Superman Jumps, weirdly enough. There's a tiny bit on this air brake I am missing, which annoys me. What if I go down here? Aha! There we go. I should probably bring a ladder over for that. Please, Mr. Ladder. Tell me that I can put you right up over that's not where I actually wanted you, but oh. Paris is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> hmm. I don't like you. You look like a gay fing dangling spot. Maybe I'm making this worse for myself than I need it to be. Maybe I can just... Maybe it's not as... No, no, it's definitely going to be as anal as I feared it is. Yep, it's going to be every bit as been dangly as I feared it was going to be. Oh, help me. Okay... I'll console myself with the nice big flat area for a little bit. There you go. Nice big flat area. Wait. Ah, I was hoping maybe I could bring that up here. That would have been genuinely useful, but no, no. Can't have that. That'd be far too good. How dare you even think such a thing. I'm going to hate the rear armor. I can already tell I'm really gonna hate the rear arm portion. I'm really, really gonna hate the rear arm portion. Because I guarantee you there's gonna be like a little dumb thing dingly bit in between those things. Which I'm gonna need to somehow clean. I don't even have a ladder. the vents are easy. You know, the little blinking lights makes me feel good about myself. Like, you successfully cleaned that. Good job. Oh, 
God, yes, this is gonna be a nightmare. I probably just need to bring that over there. Yes, that's probably compromise. Ignore that for now. That's a problem for future arch, not a problem for this arch. Next on the first pop of tea. Still not finished, went to bed three hours ago listening to Rax. Thought he'll be done soon, but no, you're still a failure and an adept of Mars. I tell you, this shit takes for, for absolute ever. It really, really does. Now, on the bright side, there are mostly just large surfaces left. So I'm presuming these will be quicker, but there's still 12%. Oi, oi, oi. They weren't kidding when chat said that this was like a, like a four or five hour goddamn job. And what do I get paid for all of this? 250 bucks. I feel like the adepts of Mars are not really adequately compensated for their labors. It's so tall. Okay, come on. You gotta be a bit... You gotta be a bit nice with me with the... The stabilizer. Come on. That's gotta count for the same... Same stabilizer, right? This part too? It does. Thank fuck. Okay. Right. That's not going to be anywhere near as bad, then. Probably. Maybe. I hope. Yes, yes. Just a big, nice, flat surface. Nothing to be afraid of. I wonder how many tons this... Just, just this enormous slab of metal must surely weigh. Good god. I feel like this thing would not fly. I feel like this thing would never ever get off the ground in any sane reasonable universe. I feel like the orcs should probably sue the Imperium for copying their violations of the laws of nature magic. Because there is no way this enormous fuck off hunk of metal gets off the ground. I mean, look at it. It's just one enormous slab of armor. That's all it is. It's not even a flying tank. It's a flying bastion. Damn, it's not clean. Getting worried now. Oh, well, something not clean. Whatever it was. Oh, that's part of the rear armor too? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's better. Yep, yep, please, please be clean. Please be clean. No. Damn. I thought I'd found an easy way to clean the rear armor, but no. I still somehow need to get down there and dangle in to the dibbity bob bits at the ass end of the ship. Whatever they are. You know, this is incredibly dangerous. Just pointing that out, too. I am power washing a sheer metal surface whilst I don't even know how many meters off the ground. Imagine if I was using soap right now, huh? Imagine how unfathomably dangerous this would be. One slip and you are going to break every single solitary bone in your body, even the little... Even the little dumbass bones in your foot and shit. Just all of them shattered to fine fucking pulver. Mmm. Terrifying. That's dust. That's all. Wash, 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 wash. Upper vertical stabilizer tip. Uh, 
you. Where are you? You know where. What part of you did I not clean? Don't tell me it was the front part. Well, it was definitely the front part. In the seams, nice and close. The Sideshow Man 212. Funny, you're the second thing second thing to suggest guns, jumps, and steel to me today. The first being LLM. I was consulting on the early modern periods. Uh, LLM. 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 I have no idea. LLM. I feel like I should know that, but I don't. Guns and Germs and Steel is a good book. It's just not a very good read. An important distinction. There we go, there's the tip. Alright. It's not a god. Okay, if you want a really bad read, though, there are worse. There are worse than Guns, Germs and Steel. There are way worse. Try Rommel's Personal Memoirs. Oh, god. It is some of the driest shit you have ever seen. It is like the desert sands of his campaign just rose up and decided to choke you the fuck out. That's what it feels like. It is a painful, painful read as he goes into pedantic detail as well. I... He might have been a decent enough general, but he should be barred from getting his hands on any sort of writing apparatus or utensils or tools of any sort. He should give that job to somebody else who can sentence structure. Hmm. What bits have I not cleaned? Got the tip. Vertical stabilizers. I'd clean the front. I'd clean the sides. The quest for the tiny bit you didn't clean. I feel like this game is sometimes. Oh, oh, oh. Where? Where? I hope it's not... Like, those little... Hold on. Right. It's time to break my legs. Time to smash myself on the floor. Yes, that's what it, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. The, there you go. Yep, knew it. I fucking knew it. Okay. I'm glad you can pivot as hard as you can on this thing. I mean, I don't take any damage even if I fall, so it's not like this is actually that bad, but even so. Is that still not clean? Upper vertical stabilizer rudder. No, it's still not clean. Ah. Help. What are you dirty with? There we go. It was a tiny bit of schmutz up there. God help me. Right. That's the ass clean. Um. I don't care about you. I'm gonna wait. I don't. I don't want to bother with you. I don't bother. I I can just look at them, and I know they're gonna be a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna put off the pain in the ass for longer. The pain in the ass gets to be Archer's problem in the future. It does not get to be Archer's problem now. Now Archer's just gonna enjoy painting the big, nice, fat, fluffy, flat surfaces 
of the giant gun mounted on top of the aircraft. The giant gun that would undoubtedly shake it to bits were it to ever actually be fired. I mean, can you imagine the recoil of this thing? And all of that, since it's bolted to the hull, of course, would translate directly into the hull. Like, there's nowhere else for the vibrations to travel. You can't just mount it in the dirt and have the, you know, earth sort of take up the recoil. All of it directly into the hull. Which means directly into every nut, every bolt, every screw, every rivet, every tiny, tiny little manufacturing error in the airframe exposed to the full force and frenzy of this enormous fuck-off rail cannon. Mm. Yes. It would, um... It would not go well. In fact, I'm pretty sure it would literally destroy the entire aircraft. But hey, details, details. We shouldn't get too pedantic about it. This is a design from the goddamn... Not even the 90s, not even... 80s, 70s, I think? Thunderhawk is old. Really old. It has a filtration system. It it has exhaust vents. I wonder if there are dudes in there. It kind of looks like there would be dudes in there. Yeah, it's a laser, but that doesn't matter. You, have you seen goddamn... Las guns in 40k? Las guns have recoil in 40k. This thing has recoil. I guarantee it. I absolutely guarantee it. It's like how in every um, like Imperial Guard book they talk about how they've uh, they feel like the stock bumping against them, etc. Las guns in 40k have recoil. And so this thing definitely has recoil. Big, bad, brutish, terrifying, destructive, awful, awful recoil. That was one of the things I liked about uh, Dawn of War, actually, because Dawn of War, they didn't have recoil. The, um... Well, that was kind of the weird part. So, you can see on the, uh, the Predator, right? It's obviously got recoil dampeners on the turbo, or the, not the turbo, but the, uh, the Destructor. Was the Destructor? What was the anti-tank right? The Vanquisher? Nah. Annihilator? No. Is it? Hmm. I don't remember now. But they've got recoil dampeners. And yet, in the, the LAS guns didn't have recoil. They just fired them. I thought that was a nice, uh, nice, little, nice little touch, actually. Because, yes, a LAS weapon would not have a whole lot of recoil. It might have a little bit, because you are still, you know, um, expelling heated gases, I guess, potentially. A little bit of recoil, but nowhere near that which 40k usually has. As they describe them like properly bumping back against their shoulders, etc. Plus, recoil is cool, that's why you want it. You want a little bit of recoil because a little bit of recoil makes the gun look cooler. And it makes it have action, you know? That makes it have a thump to it. Which is very important. Weapons need thump. That's why all laser weapons pretty much have recoil. You know, in games, entertainment, etc. I think actually Star Wars is one of relatively few settings, you know, big ones anyways, where the laser weapons don't have recoil, even though they probably should have recoil because they're technically plasma. And if you're heating plasma within a reaction chamber inside of that thing, you should definitely have a little bit of recoil when it like screeches out. Not to mention, you've got, like, a magnetic accelerator, right? How would that work? Like, the ma magnetic accelerator. Surely that would at least produce, like, a... I don't know, like a bump? Sucking? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not, actually. I mean, it's just magnets inversing, so... Maybe not, actually. Huh.
Oh well, the less, thing, the less I can think about Star Wars weapons, the better. Star Wars. The objectively inferior version of 40k. It's true. Actually, on that point of controversial things I can say... Wait, did I... Ah, yes, I did manage to clean you. I watched Charlie's Angels... Not Charlie's Angels. Uh, Kill Bill again the other day. I wish I'd watch Charlie's Angels. Actually, I, mean, I don't. It was a terrible movie. Kill Bill. Awful movie. Awful, 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 awful movie. Okay? Kill Bill is a terrible movie. Kill Bill 2. Awful movie. Kill Bill 1. Awful movie. Terrible movies. I don't know why they're popular. And you should all be ashamed for liking them. Like, I was just googling, like, hey, are there some cool action movies I could, uh, you know, acquire? And that came up at the top of the list, and I was like, I remember that. So I, da so I, oh, I didn't download it. I got it, of course, yes. Watched it, hated it. Hated all of it. Action is kind of gay. Characters kind of gay. Story kind of gay. Characters, all of it. All of it. Terrible movie. I don't understand why people like it. Aged like the worst kind of milk chat. And don't you dare disagree. Because if you do, you'll be wrong. Good. Chat isn't disagreeing. Good. Oh, why? No, no. Wider nozzle. Wider. I don't know how I'm not sliding off this, but... And now they're defending it. No, 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 chat. No, no, no. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Horrible movie. Effects are terribly dated. And sword fighting is slow and boring and mediocre. Acting is kind of meh. The story is dumb. The whole assassin thing is dumb. Characters are dumb. Cheesy. Terrible. I wonder what other bad movies chat likes. Oh. This is the problem. Sometimes chat is just wrong and you don't know what to do with it. Current year makes it look good. Oh, not even that. Ah, I, I, I think I've gotten a, a very low bar for entertainment. But even then, no, no, no. Just, it just, it just wasn't good chat. You must understand. Cultural milestone, Fenrir? Not you, too, Fenrir. You disappoint me. Cultural mile. What is even wrong with you? What is even wrong with you? Though I will agree it was a little bit of a cultural milestone, but that's not reason enough to like it. We've got to reject its terrible terribleness. We must reject it. We must reject it so that we can make better things. Not that we're going to, but. I'm sure we'll get there again eventually. 95%. God, I am getting close. I am actually unironically getting close. The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride. I have heard of that. The Princess Bride. American fantasy adventure comedy film. Uh, oh, that one. Yeah, no, I watched that one. That one's great. That one's great. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That one's great. Kill Bill's awful. Though. Terrible. Dreadful. Terrible movie. Should be ashamed of itself. On the other hand... You know? I am warming to fury. See? My my tastes are evolving. Furry was not a very good movie when it first came out. But you know what? It's kind of aged well. Furry has actually kind of aged well. At the time, it was compared with Saving Private Ryan and Brand of Brothers, and it didn't stand up very well in that particular company. But today, where we haven't had, like, a decent World War II action movie in... If our 20, 30 goddamn years. Furry's not bad. You know, furry's okay. 
It's got Shia LaBeouf in it, which is weird, particularly considering what happened to him afterwards. It's particularly cons uh, But now it also makes sense why the Germans spared him at the end of the movie, okay? Because he looked under the tank and he saw Shia LaBeouf there and it was just like, Ach, nein. I've seen your future, Shia. Not killing you here will be a far worse fate for you, yeah. And then he moves on, shaking his head. <laughs> what a terrible fate. <clears throat> now, granted, the tank duel against the tiger. Still retarded. Still retarded. But at least the tiger killed, like, all of them before Furry got it. So there's that. It should have killed Furry, too, but, you know, Brad Pitt was aboard Furry, so, you know, you couldn't really kill that. I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt is more or less unkillable, killable. Fairly certain. Right, am I close enough? I hope so. Brr. Service guarantees citizenship. Mm. Look at that percentage go as we clean the big, fat, soft, white surfaces. Not red, actually, but wide surfaces. Yes. Yes. Progress, so close, 4%. Stop pressing that button. Mmm, delicious progress. And a document, a weapon without recoil is no fun. Correct. That's why it needs recoil. Every weapon needs a little bit of recoil. Even the last weapons, even the plasmas, even the magnetics. Everything needs a little recoil. Very important. Otherwise, you feel like you're not shooting it. Anime document. Isaac cleaning the ship with gas-powered lion gun firing water. Isaac Clark. Oh, yes. Isaac from Dead, uh, Dead Space. Dead Space cleanup detail. I'd play that just for the meme. Where you go across the, uh, the Ishimaru. Was this the Ishimaru? What's the Ishimaru? I feel like it was the Ishimaru. Just cleaning it up. Retreading your steps. That would be fun. That would be a nice little fan wank experience. I, did, I would enjoy that, actually. I kind of would. Right. Nado nozzle. Nozzle. Nozzle me nadoly. And Frankel Jack. You said you were watching the new Shogun. Did you watch the old one with Richard Chamberlain? I. Uh, it's good... It's good, not I. Claudius, great, but good for 1980. I have not watched the original, nor do I suspect I'm going to go back and rewatch it, because honestly, Shogun... Shogun is good enough as it is. Like, Shogun's really good. I am really enjoying Shogun. I, they've got a lot of really high-quality Japanese actors, and the guy they got to uh, play the foreigner as well is really good. I fucking love his voice. He sounds like a 40k character. He sounds like a space marine. Like, if Henry Cavill is watching Shogun, he needs to hire that guy. He sounds fucking perfect for the job. He really, really does. He's got that natural, unforced... No, I'm gonna get squirt like a bug. Yay. A natural, unforced, gravelly voice. Love him. He's great. Really, really good TV series. I heartily recommend Shogun, and I heartily recommend Masters of the Air as well. Go watch Masters of the Air. I know it's on Apple Plus. Apple Plus is crap, okay? But Masters of the Air is good. And once you're on there, um, For All Mankind, I think, uh, is the title, a show about going to space. Another very, very good television show. Got like four seasons right now, I think. Very good show. Very good show. Go on, little attack wing. Become clean. Become clean. Become clean. Become clean. Ooh. That's terrifying. Become clean. So clean yourself with cum. Become clean. Yeah, I don't like that. 
I don't, I don't think you can clean yourself with that particular substance. I feel like no matter how much you clean yourself, it would just make things worse. It would just make things so much worse. You would rub and rub and rub and it'd just get worse and worse and worse. Sticky. Get everywhere. Thready. Oof. Terrifying. No amount of soap would get it out after a certain point. You'd just feel sticky forever. And weird. And defiled in a weird way. That's the power of juice. Orgasmic juices. It makes you feel dirty in a way that nothing else really does, you know? Really stains the skin in a way that only the soul can fully cleanse. That, or fire, or a severe case of amnesia. For a moment there, I felt like something was crawling on the wall, but it was just a fan. I have re-evaluated my earlier idea of introducing time limits to this game, by the way. Because, uh... I feel like trying to clean this while something is actively hunting you would... Well, just kind of fucking suck, if I'm to be entirely honest. I don't actually think it would be all that fun. I think it would be terrible. Dreadful. Awful. Right. Ah. I can clean it from here. Tell me I can clean it from here. There we go. Oh god, it's almost done! It's almost clean! I know I've been saying that for a while now, but it is! It's almost done! It's almost fucking clean! It's so close. I have got the dumbass thing still, though, so let's finally deal with that. I've had my fun cleaning the night's flat surfaces, so... Let's deposit this over here. Oh, that was... That was a lot, cool, a lot quicker than I expected to be. Hmm. Mysterious. I expected that to be a lot gayer than it was. Unexpected. What was the name of that movie that was all in black and white? Now that we're talking about movies instead of horrible, you know, monkey peeling penis banana stuff. The one that had the Hobbit in it, uh, that had Frodo Baggins be like a crazy psycho murderer, that one. What was the name of that one? It had sequels, it got sequels, and they were all kind of garbage. And it, it shouldn't have had sequels. Service guaranteed citizenship. Was it Sin City? I feel like Sin City is too cringe a title for it to have had. That was really good too, that was really good actually, I enjoyed that one. That was another one of those Jessica Alba movies, wasn't it? She was in everything for a few moments there. She was in a movie about swimming. I remember that one. Uh, was that Deep Blue? That was a terrible movie. Jessica Alba can't act, incidentally, in case you run away. Well, I suppose she can act like Jessica Alba, because she has the same character in every single one of her movies, but... Mm. As far as sexy jailbait goes, I guess she did a good enough job in Sin City. Sin City. Now there is an actual, like, cultural landmark right there. Screw Kill Bill. Sin City. That's the first, like, proper cultural landmark thing. For, like, comic books and mainstream stuff. <clears throat> what part of you is not clean? Ah, that part of you was not clean. Game needs to give me a fucking magnifying glass. To find the schmutz I've somehow missed. Oh, is it over here, maybe? Where? Ah, there we go. There we go. Nice. Is it just the wing left? Is the wing all I have left? Oh, so close, so close, so close. Mmm, so close. Nice, big, flat surface. Mmm, yes, yes. Come on, 
Come on. Come on, 99%. You know you want to. You know you want to. Maybe with the power pack, 99. Uh, it's holding out on me. I don't like it. Come on. Come on. I need to go back and rewatch a bunch of old 90s television, I realize. Maybe it's time to do the once per decade rewatch of Pacific Blue. See, I'm sure none of you have any idea what Pacific Blue is, but to Norwegians, it's like a religion. Unironically, it's have it's had like reruns on our national broadcasting uh, station, Enarco, like since forever. It's it's like a cultural hegemony over here. It's like one of the first like American shows we got in Norway and it's been remained incredibly popular forever and ever and ever and ever. 99%. It's about bike cops. It's the weirdest premise ever. But it it weirdly sorta of, kinda of, it's like CSI before CSI. It's like Uber Proto CSI. Well, you know how it's a little bit weird that CSI does all of the police work, like the arresting, the investigation, the evidence gathering, the gun battles, etc. That was the same for Pacific Blue, where the bike cops did all of this. They gathered evidence, they arrested people, engaged in gun battles, power fought crime lords and drug lords, etc. It's and so on and so on. All while desperately banging one another, violently and vigorously, continuously. As fresh cast members of young, nubile youngsters joined them, only to be banged violently. Ah, the good old days. Where you watched a television show and you just expected it to be filled with beautiful people, viciously rubbing their genitalia together every chance they got. Mm. The good old days indeed. Ends on a cliffhanger, mind you, so bear that in mind. That was the norm back in the day. Like, every show ended on a cliffhanger. Because every show assumed that if you did that, well, you'd have to be renewed, right? Television company couldn't possibly cancel a show when it ended on a cliffhanger, right? Television show would totally give you another season, right? No, 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 they wouldn't. Television show really didn't care. They just, just did not care. Not two shits. Especially not in the era of Baywatch, where everyone was trying to be Baywatch. You know, Baywatch almost failed, you know? That, that's an interesting little factoid. Baywatch almost flopped, because it didn't actually get that much of an audience right off the bat. In fact, a lot of its audience happened outside of America, in a lot of weird places, like Iran. I know, Iran does not seem perhaps like the kind of place that you'd expect a sizable Baywatch audience to appear, but nope, it was a very sizable audience. God damn it, front of the wing. Come here. Oh. Wait, that was not what I intended to do, but... Good enough, good enough. There we go. Attack wing, done. Right. Now, I just need to find whatever piece of minutia is on this fucking thing that I haven't washed. What tiny, tiny, insignificant thing have I not washed? There's got to be more than three, because it hasn't actually given me the thing yet. Oh. Nose... Nose armor belt. Nose armor belt. Well, there's no dirt here. Nose. Oh, heavy bolter is still schmutzig. Okay. That's fine. We can fix that easily enough. Right, nose. Nose 
armor belt. Nose armor belt. <gasps> there we go. That was it. It was the tiniest fucking bit. The tiniest, tiniest, tiniest fucking bit. Come on, come on, come on. We're speed running this now, chat. We're gonna finish this. We are going to beat Power War Simulator. What was more terrifying, this or FNAF? This. Definitely. Not that you asked, chat, but I answered the question regardless. Even if you did not pose it. Even if you did not pose it. This definitely. This is definitely the most horrifying game. For the simple reason that you see a Thunderhawk covered in grime and shit, and your heart just sinks at the sheer load of work ahead of you. The sheer hours of power washing crushing down upon you. Driving the energy out of your soul. What part of you is not clean, you big, fat, retarded cow? What part of you isn't clean? Come on, give me the little thing up in the top corner, I don't know. Underside hatch, underside armor, underside armor, retro thrusters. What part of you is not clean? What part of you is not clean? What did I miss? What did I fucking miss? What part? Oh my god. Is there is there a list? Attack wing hinges. Attack wing hinges. Okay. Okay, that's a hint. Attack wing hinges. Right, attack wing hinges. Hinges. Mount. Mount. Hinges. Hinges. Hinge. Okay, hinges. Okay. So one of these is not clean. Not clean to the master's specifications. Not that one. Must be this one. No? Brett. Attack wing hinge. What? What? But. Clean. But clean. Video game. Attack wing hinges. Clean. I am lost and confused. Hmm. Clean. Clean. That one. What, have I, how didn't I see that? I checked that one. God damn it. The question. Fire is the answer. All right. <laughs> What's left? Main wing lights. Oh my god. Really? I needed to clean those? Really? The fucking lights? Fucking lights aren't clean enough for you? Okay, I bet you the other light too. I guarantee it. Yes. God damn it. Engine turbine. It's a turbine. It'll get dirty again. It's one percent not clean. Here at the Ford, we pride ourselves on absolute excellence. There will be no breaks until you're done. Look, there's a big 
black spot there. Main wingtip light. Main... Main wingtip light. Okay, not you. I don't care if I break my ankle, it's fine. Turbo laser destructive Ventama. <gasps> last thing, last thing, last motherfucking thing. Ventama, Ventama. Vent, 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 vent. Huh? Vent? Yeah. Is it? I fucking bet you it's right under there or something. Vent? Vent? Oh, yes, it was. Vent? Vent? Okay, can I make a blink? Blink. It is that thing. Oh. God. Fucking help, Arch. Oh, it's done. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I hate this game. I hate this game. I hate this game. I hate this game. I hate this game, and I hate whatever it did to me. Mm. Sand Doom. <laughs> On Streamlabs. It did help Europe that the disease of Europe wiped out a good chunk of the native in America. I think it was like 90% that died. Correct me if I'm wrong. It certainly did help. It was useful. It was a, it was a worthwhile aid. You know, it was a, it was a good, good cheat mechanism, if nothing else. Ha. <sighs> Natürlich, hallo, Herr Bogen, werfen Sie einfacht nur mit Deutschen, wurden um Sie oder sprechen? Sie die Sprachen wirklich? Falls, ja, warum? Oh, I did speak, but it's been fucking ages by now. Like, I can barely pick apart German, and it is not easy anymore. It's been like, what, 20, 25 years or something? It's been a while. And of document, is there anything more terrifying than a 9 to 5 job? No. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> Go to your swordsman, now polish it, adept. I don't want to. I... I don't wish to. <sighs> Never again. Never, ever, ever again. Ah, <sighs> Awful. I hope they don't do any more DLC. I swear to God, I swear to Jesus, if this becomes popular and they decide to add more 40k power washing, no, don't wanna, <laughs> don't wanna. Just enjoy the wet t-shirt sister washing the rhino. That's all you need. That's all you need in your life. Good night, chat. Oh, the time lapse? Uh, oh yeah, there we go. I feel like they speed this up a lot more than it really did happen. I feel like this took a lot longer than this. Right, I'm pretty fucking sure this took a lot longer than this. In that first portion there was the first three hours. Oh, God help me. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs>